encore after tying an FBS record with eight touchdowns last weekend against Texas Tech. It's season six in the brief history of University of Texas San Antonio football, but tonight presents an opportunity for a marquee win. It's the Sun Devils and Roadrunners right now. Welcome to ESPN College Football Primetime from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. It's the 2-0 Arizona State Sun Devils out of the Pac-12 and the 1-1 UTSA Roadrunners from Conference USA. Along with former collegiate NFL linebacker Ray Bentley, I'm Mark Neely. We see a 2-0 Arizona State team that won both those games at home, but they make their first venture onto the road this year. Yeah, and that's when you really find out about your football team. And Todd Graham, he really thinks he's got a good one. He'll find out a lot more tonight taking it on the road, see if he can get one here in his home state of Texas. Well, Arizona State fans are excited to see the follow-up for Kalen Bolage after last weekend's eight touchdown performance against Texas Tech. And only 15 touches in the game. That's a pretty good average as far as getting into the end zone. And it was an amazing performance in a lot of ways, you know. He took over the goal line package that they ran, and he got some pretty easy touchdowns on a couple of them where they just cleared the path. But he also had to work for some, bouncing it outside. He just has a great feel to break the plane of the end zone and get it in. And, boy, he's got power. He'll run people over. He's explosive. He's got enough speed to get it all the way to the house from outside. He's a good receiver as well. As you said at the top, Mark, I can't wait to see his uh, encore performance here tonight. Well, the 68 points put up by Arizona State last weekend in their 13-point win over Texas Tech, the most points they have put up in the Todd Graham era. Coach Graham in his fifth season as the Arizona State head coach. And this UTSA program built by Larry Coker the first five years of its existence. He has departed in the offseason, and Frank Wilson now in his first year as the head coach. Uh, I enjoyed our conversation with Coach Wilson. Very laid back and and I think he's got something going here. We'll find out how many how much progress they have made. Well, Arizona State won the toss and they will receive. It looks like Tim White will not play tonight. Kalen Balaj is back to receive the opening kickoff. And we are underway from San Antonio. And it angles right near the one. It bounces into the end zone near the pylon for a touchback. It'll come out to the 25. So the absence of Tim White Ray will affect them in several ways on special teams. And also it takes a target away from Manny Wilkins. And it may seem odd to say after Bellage had eight touchdowns a week ago, but perhaps the offensive player of the game was this guy, Manny Wilkins. I was impressed as I watched it. I, I you know, I'm looking at it and, and I'm like, who is this guy? What's going on here? Because he made very few mistakes. Offside. There's a flag on, on the field, team. right? Five-yard penalty and a re-kick. And the offsides against UTSA. And Arizona State's going to make them kick it again. That's what I do. And, you know, you have the energy uh, that you expend on a kickoff. And then to have to go out there and cover it again, I'm not sure what the numbers are, but I know I've seen a lot of big returns second time through because this coverage team is a little bit gassed. So once again, Balaj back deep to receive the Daniel Portillo kickoff. With Tio this year, a 63% touchback rate, five out of eight. And he has put in the end zone, and we'll have to kick this one from the 30. So put 15 minutes back on the clock. And let's try this again. Well, none of that ever happened. No flag back at the 30, so we are officially underway. And up at the 13, taken by Balaj, hits the 30, and it tripped up there. Taken down at the 33-yard line, so taking the penalty pays off for Arizona State. They gained some field position, and we'll start from there. But I was mentioning, Ray, this may sound like deja vu all over again, right. but last weekend, Manny Wilkins, for me, was their offensive player of the game, which seems odd to say with Balaj's performance. Uh, he was outstanding in that football game. I, you know, Some people called it a perfect game. I find it hard to argue with. We talked to Coach Graham. He said the previous week they gave him about 30 things they thought he needed to uh, uh, correct and fix, and Coach Graham said he fixed every single one of them, did not repeat a single mistake from week one to week two. That's a phenomenal leap. Can he do it again? Demario Richards in the backfield with him. They have Balaj in the slot who now comes in motion and they jet sweep to Balaj running right with Richard blocking, but he's upended 
At about the 37 by Nate Gaines, the free safety, and it's a gain of three. And I think the, you know, they have a very good back in number four, Demario Richard, who had over 100 yards rushing last week as well. So this team is loaded at the skill positions. Love their tight end as well, Cody Cole. Yeah, Richard, 30 carries, 109 yards last weekend. He did a lot of the dirty work getting it near the goal line last weekend, and Balaj got the payoff with the eight touchdowns. Yeah, he was the lead blocker in all those packages. He stacked two receivers at the bottom of the screen. Here's Demario Richard with his first carry. He's all the way up near the marker at the 43. Michael Iguagu stopping him, maybe just shy after a gain of six. He was just a little bit short, but they're quickly back to the line. And Richard bounces off left side. He'll have the first down to midfield. The cornerback, a true freshman, Tendrick McGee, with the tackle after a pickup of seven. Manny Wilkins threw a block on that one after handing it off. That was outstanding. The quarterback that blocks for you, too. Wilkins now looking to throw for the first time, and it's brought down. A flag comes out as Marcus Davenport sacks him. Back at the 48-yard line of Arizona State. I don't know if they're going to call that a horse collar. It looks like they're, they're going to call a hold. But Davenport opened the season with a pair of sacks in the opener, and, and he is an, a very effective pass rusher. And it is a hold. Yeah. Hey, 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 Our referee 40. tonight, Rodney Burnett, this conference USA crew. Ten-yard penalty, first down. Called against McCray, the right guard. On the hold, you were mentioning Marcus Davenport. Last year had four sacks playing behind Jason Neal, who really was their top sack guy a year ago. And and second team all conference. You'll see Davenport line up on the edge. They like to use him to cover the tight end. But this is a 3-3 defense, even though they're lined up in a 4-2 look right now. The Lodge now in the backfield on first down and 20 back at the Arizona State 40-yard line. Wilkins immediately looking left. He's looking for his big, tall, true freshman, and he has Harry up at the 40, right near the marker, the 41-yard line of UTSA. Aeneas Hendricks on the coverage, and they are going to press the corners. In particular, they're going to uh, press number one, Harry, throughout the night to try and avoid what we call RPOs. More on that later. It was a 21-20-yard gain and a first down. Going for Harry again, a diving attempt, and he can't quite get to it off the fingertips inside the 10-yard line. RPOs are run-pass options, and so one way to take that away is to come up and press the receiver. But what it forces is this type of throw. When you get a, a big receiver pressed, you're going to run the fade route, and that's exactly what they checked to, and they were very close to making uh, the Roadrunners pay for it there. Nikhil Harry, 6'4", 220-pound true freshman, one of the top wide receivers in last year's recruiting class nationally. Here's Balaj, turns it up inside, and he gains close to five up near the 35. It's left in Ben Kane with the tackle for UTSA. Four new starters on the Sun Devil offensive line, and they have come together and really improved over the first couple of weeks. They, they really had to mix up the, where the guys are playing, but they think they've found where they want them now. At least that's what Chip Lindsey, the offensive coordinator, expressed to us. Which includes number 65, A.J. McCollum, at the center position once again this week. Third down and four. Quick strike, all alone, wide open, and off the fingertips of Harvey, incomplete. Well, no Tim White tonight with the ankle injury, so it looks like Harvey and Gamage should get more opportunities, and there was a chance Harvey was wide open. Well, they, they blew the coverage. Uh, the Roadrunners blew the coverage. There was nobody over there on Harvey, and so this is just uh, the quarterback being aware of things. He threw it out there. Harvey's got to bring that one in. They're going to go for a long one here. Zane Gonzalez off the right hash will attempt a 54-yarder as long this year as 53, which came against Northern Arizona in week one. Kick is away. It has the distance. No problem. And it is good. So Zane Gonzalez with a new season high, 54-yarder. No problem here indoors at the Alamo Dome tonight. So it's Arizona State that scores on the game's first possession. Okay, 
Good little start, boys. You can call me on the cell phone. That's how I remember Frank cell phones, because I was calling him Scalfo. It looks that so way, so but now yeah, it's so like, you can call me on the cell phone. <laughs> Career long as well? Yep. That kid's going to pass, and he's going to be the all time NCAA field yeah, goal. Yeah, it's getting close. divided by 88. Zane Gonzalez with a career-high 54-yard field goal, and it's 3-0 Arizona State. UTSA to get the football for the first time tonight. That was his 78th career field goal for Gonzalez. He's uh, closing in on the all-time NCAA FBS record. And he'll kick off here, and he's about as good as it gets when it comes to touchbacks. Last year led the nation, put 66 of 88 kickoffs into the end zone for a touchback 75% of the time this year. He's 17 and 19, so 89% of his kicks have gone for touchbacks. And this one will be no exception. Yeah, that's 70 yards in the air right there. Not a bad leg for Mr. Gonzalez. Well, we get to see the UTSA offense led by a guy who's a former walk-on, now a scholarship quarterback, Dalton Stern. Yeah, I think a great story. Anytime a kid has the resilience to come in and, and try to walk on, number one, he's got to have some confidence in himself because he did have some offers at some smaller level schools. But he decided to roll the dice, and he's, he's put on about 30 pounds, and he's worked his way up. He took over and started the last seven games for him last season, and I'm excited to see him play tonight. He's under center, Jarvion Williams. He's been dealing with an ankle sprain that he suffered in their first game of the year against Alabama State. Seems to be close to 100%. They took too much time. Well, not the way you want to start the game. And uh, well, Frank Wilson on the sideline saw that the deal was getting down to the very last second. He took that time out to save him that penalty. But still, uh, you know, you don't come out in your first play and you can't get it off. Not sure what they'll talk about here, but we'll step aside.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they went into their four minute offense <laughs> before they ran a play. <laughs> You, you're going to say that, okay? The year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was the uh, the hero down there? Baby Crockett, Bowie. Sam Houston was in that one? Uh, he was later. Which this makes it 1836. Yeah, my old buddy Davey Crockett told me that. <laughs> That's where Crockett died. Oh, I remember. The Alamo. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it was a previous life, bro. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Allstate and the Allstate AFCA Good Works team. Recognizing athletes for their charitable work. Visit ESPN.com slash Allstate to learn more. Well, the Alamo right in downtown San Antonio. Every good Texan and anybody that knows their Texas history, Ray, knows that the Battle of the Alamo was in what year? Uh, I remember the Alamo, uh, 1836. 1836 is correct. Well, yeah, just and, uh, my buddy Davy Crockett and I talked about it one time. Oh, just a short distance away from there here in the Alamo Dome. Here's the first play of the game and running right. This is the quarterback. Stern gets a block on the edge. He's down the sideline and steps out of bounds at the 47. He got a nice block on the edge from receiver Kerry Thomas and a 22-yard run for the QB. Well, number one for the Sun Devils, JoJo Wicker. He's coming off the edge, and he gets uh, fooled by the fake. He tackles the back, and Dalton Sturm does a nice job pulling it out and then displays his speed to get the edge. It's one thing I was impressed with Sturm, he's a fast dude. Arizona State looking to stop the run here. As they brought the house, and Williams picks up about one. A.J. Latu is the first to get to him, number 44. And Latu had to play linebacker last week, a defensive lineman. They're, they're missing Christian Sam. He's out with injury. He's one of the starting linebackers. And Salamo Fiso is another one, and he was suspended. Uh, he'll actually come back and play his first game next week against Cal. Second down at nine. Thomas in motion up to the top of the screen. In trouble. He's brought down and sacked by Carlos Mendoza, the linebacker. All right, and, and I'd say Mendoza got away with one because it looked to me like he had coverage on Williams, but he just left the coverage and joined the pass rush. Had Dalton Stern been able to see that, he, he had Jarvian on Williams wide open. So a loss of six on the sack. Sacks were a problem last week for UTSA, Ray, especially late in the game at Colorado State. They were sacked in four of their final nine plays on offense in that game. Marquez McNair in motion. Sturm pressure, dumps off the screen pass all the way to midfield. Williams into Arizona State territory before he's tripped up at the 34 by Armand Perry. Love the play call from Frank Selfo, the offensive coordinator for the Roadrunners. They're going to rush after your quarterback. Their ears are pinned back early in the game. Fool him, slow him down with a little screen pass, and then Williams gets out in the open field, gets a nice little block, and away he goes. That's good football and a nice call by Coach Selfo. Williams runs for 24 yards. He ran for 1,042 last year. Became the school's first 1,000-yard rusher in a single season. They have to run the sweep over to this uh, bunch, tight bunch formation. Williams 
He just got a little piece of him to take him down near the 30 or pick up a three. That was DJ Calhoun, linebacker, got just enough to bring him down. This front seven for the Sun Devils uh, is, is pretty stout. Their issue is in the back end of the defense. They're very young in the secondary. They blew four coverages last week, gave up 28 points to Texas Tech and Patrick Mahomes. Showing pressure again, Williams, and nowhere to go there. It puts off that slot, and there was nobody home to pick up Calhoun or Marcus Ball. Well, he loses a yard. They'll come off the top edge, and you see right there, Boom, ball, nobody picks him up. And, and the Roadrunners had a big problem picking up blitzes in their loss last week against Colorado State. And I know the Sun Devils watch that film, and they're going to blitz tonight a little bit, make sure they fix that up. So far, they have not. UTSA, a third down and eight. Here comes pressure. Sturm unloads, and it's caught. And where he's brought down right near the marker, Josh Stewart may have the first down. Bryson Eccles wrapped him up. I think he's going to be a little shy. And it's going to be fourth down in inches. So fourth and about the length of the football. Uh, going back to that throw, I like the way Dalton Sturm hung in there, even though the pocket was collapsing around him a little bit. Last week, he had a little trouble. UTSA one of four on fourth down this year. Sneak it. And that indeed is what he does, and then he breaks free for a moment. He had his eyes on the end zone. He's frustrated he didn't make it to the house. Tackled at the 15 by the shoe tops. Gets a gain of 10 when they needed the length of the football for a first down. I half. don't understand this, why you don't cover the nose on a fourth and inches. The quarterback sneaks the number one play that's run. You have to have a nose tackle on fourth and one, and they did not. So UTSA converts. They have a first down. From the 15 and a flag pre-snap. Yeah, little finger pointing going on. That's going to be a, a false start. They got Austin Pratt. Big left guard who also can play center for him. Came in and played a little center last week. First and 15 from the ASU 20. So it makes it a first down at 15, backs it up to the 20-yard line. Greg Campbell in motion, Sturm rolling out. Looks like he wants to run with it now as run out of bounds. He was looking downfield in the end zone, and there was good coverage there. And a good decision again by Dalton Sturm, not trying to force anything or do anything heroic and just live to fight another down. No gain on the play, so it's second down and 15. Bryce Taylor, the receiver at the bottom of the screen. Up top, Greg Campbell. Three receivers to that left side for Dalton Sturm. Sturm looking slant caught up to the 10-yard line. Trump brings down play. It's a gain of 10. McNair there, and Sturm connects. Sturm did a nice job pulling it down. He wanted Brady Jones, the inside receiver, but he got tangled up with the defender, and Sturm showed some decent poise and patience waiting for McNair to clear and come into that open area, and he threw a strike. We're in the red zone so far this year, five touchdowns on their six trips to the red zone. Sturm with time to the end zone, a diving attempt. Did he come up with a yes? Touchdown to Price Taylor. Ten yard touchdown reception for Taylor. That is a great catch, and Dalton Sturm threw it where only his guy could get it. Let's take a look and see if he did actually make this catch. They'll, of course, review this, but it looks solid to me. Got his arms underneath the football, never came loose or came out. That's that's a touchdown, and that's a great start for this Roadrunner offense. Overcame a couple of penalties on first downs to continue to move the chains. 
Rutillo for the point after, out of the hold of and of course, Yanni they're and waiting it for uh, Steve Barth, the replay official, to give him the, the thumbs up, and I believe he will shortly here. If indeed it does stand, and it looks like it will, an 11 play, 75 yard drive. And as you mentioned, Ray, they overcame a couple of penalties. Point after is up and good. And UTSA answers the Arizona State initial drive, which ended with a field goal with a touchdown of their own. Taylor had three touchdown catches a year ago, and he gets his first of the year this year. Well, the key was that quarterback sneak, keeping the drive alive on fourth down. Sturm wanted it all, but they end up with seven nonetheless. Roadrunners up. Down low to McDonald. Each team has had the ball one time, and UTSA with a 7-3 lead to Bryce Taylor, his first TD catch of the year. He's a guy who began his career as a freshman at SMU. They went to Juco at Navarro for a year, now in his second season with UTSA. He was one of four different receivers that quarterback Dalton Stern hit on that drive. Stern was four for four on the drive. And 11 plays, 75 yards. And of course, Stern used his legs to convert on fourth and short. I was impressed with the play up front as well. The offensive line gave Stern some time and it opened up some holes. So if they can continue that. We're going to have a good ball game here tonight. Daniel Portillo to kick off with Kalen Balaj back at his own goal line for Arizona State. Balaj has a chance to return this one as well from the three. The 15, 20. A little jump cut, but is wrapped up at the 21 yard line. Coming up Saturday at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific on ABC. It's a huge ACC clash between top 10 teams and their star quarterbacks. Freshman DeAndre Francois leads second-ranked Florida State against Lamar Jackson and number 10 Louisville College Football presented by Walmart. Also streams live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. And last week, Balaj, his numbers. Lamar Jackson against Syracuse. Big week for both fellas who have drawn the attention in that early, and I stress the word early, Heisman watch. Strong tackles to Mario Richard. A good play up inside by Kevin Strong. This defense for the Roadrunners has struggled early in ball games. Now they were able to force a field goal in the first drive. Let's see what they can do here. Wilkins looking left. He's going to take a shot for Henry. Jump ball, and it's batted away. Really, Henry had to turn into the defender there, though McGee really didn't turn around. But it's an incompletion. This is what I'm talking about, where they're taking away the RPOs. They're going to press the corners, and you're going to see a lot of fades tonight. And this was an outstanding job of McGee, a true freshman, the timing of getting his head around and finding the football. You do that, and you very seldom will get called for a defensive pass interference. And McGee must have got it out of the corner of his eye. He just barely got that head around. A couple of true freshmen matching up, McGee and Harry. One of the things you do, how big those receivers' eyes get, that tells you to turn around. <laughs> so timeout called by Arizona State with 5.20 to play in this first quarter. Arizona State uses their first time out of this first half of 520 remaining. Second possession of the game for ASU. They were one and two on third down on their first possession. Now looking at a third down and seven from their own 26 yard line. Might have gotten a little pep talk over on the sidelines based on the way they're uh, executing here early. Three receivers at the bottom of the screen. Wilkins looking that direction. Now he has Balaj as a blocker. He's trying to oh. run for it and took a hard shot from cornerback Devron Davis. That was a, a wicked open field tackle right there. A big hit. That's the kind of thing that will get a, uh, not only a team but a crowd excited. It got me excited. The pressure comes up the middle, and here goes uh, Wilkins around the outside. It speaks for itself. And an old linebacker, I got, a, I got chills. Now, looking at that hit as the punt comes, high punt in the field, a uh, fair catch is taken at the 20-yard line. 
That last replay, it looked like helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, but it looked like helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact initiated well, by the quarterback. He's not a defenseless player. Right. He's a runner. And so that you take that right out of it. Now, it's tough to, to say exactly. I thought it was a shoulder to the chest. And then the head, obviously, whiplashed backwards. But I did not see this as above the head and neck and shoulders. And, and, and it wasn't a defenseless player. Clean hit. Football. Hard, hard but clean. Football, baby. And after the 49-yard punt, UTSA takes over just outside their own 20. Send in motion, Brady Jones. Dalton Sturm. Finding Taylor, who had the touchdown reception on the previous drive, right near the marker at the 31. Kareem Orr had the coverage, but it's a gain of close to 10. It is a 10-yard gain and a first down. In Dalton Sturm's first ball game, he completed his first eight passes in 14 of his 15, first 15. He's come out with that kind of timing and uh, execution thus far tonight. Here comes a blitz. And that is... Not much there. In fact, the yard or two perhaps lost. Yeah. It was Ami Latu. Ami Latu made the play. He got his, uh, the center. Juan Perez Isidoro pushed back and then got rid of him and stuffed that draw for a loss of two. Latu, twin brothers with A.J. Latu. And you can never get enough Latu on the field. No. Second down and 12, Sturm. And immediately coming up to make that tackle is Marcus Ball. Gain of two, so Jarvion Williams gets the two back they lost on the previous play, but it'll be third and ten. Solid tackle there from Ball, and that was an issue with the Sun Devil defense last week. Uh, they missed almost double-digit tackles by my count during the course of that game against Texas Tech, and that's something that Coach Graham said they had to clean up. I asked him if he was happy with it. He, he got, absolutely not. And they start every practice with a, what they call a tackling circuit, so they work on it, and it didn't manifest on the field last week. Third down and 10. Sturm taking a deep shot, but overthrows Taylor. And Sturm wanted to, his receiver to, to take it straight up the field rather than cut it over the middle. That's where he threw the ball, and one thing I, uh, uh, Sturm, I think, needs to work on is body language about his teammates. He displays a little much too, frust too much frustration with them. Uh, go talk to the guy quietly. There's no need to embarrass anybody. The UTSA on their second possession of the game. A first down on their first play, but then after that, next three plays and out is Yanni Roots is punting. Balage lets it bounce. Oh, no. And that's recovered by UTSA. Not sure what Balaz was thinking. That ball was bouncing around him, and he tried to make a heroic play and grabbed it, and, and then it's gone, and then Bayless ends up on it. That critical error by last week's hero, Kalen Balaz. That Bayless jumps on it, and UTSA will have it inside. The 15. I understand trying to help yourself some yardage, but you got to stay away from that ball, especially when guys are around it. And you have to wonder, and Taylor Balaj maybe has a little too much confidence in himself and his abilities after you know, last week was so easy for him with eight touchdowns. Arizona State turns it over. UTSA, a first down at the 14 of ASU. Jalen Rhodes in at the tailback position. We also have the fullback Andrew King in there. Blitz. And no chance. They, some contact at the five, but I think the officials saying no chance to catch that ball. It was Kerry Thomas, the receiver, and Gump Hayes locked up on him. Yeah, Gump Hayes is all over him, but this is an entirely uncatchable ball. And there's, you got the good push. The eyes come back, but really he just knocked the route so far outside and... and I believe Dalton Sturm's got to throw that ball a little closer to him. Thomas comes in motion this time. First carry of the game for Jalen Rhodes. 
up near the 11. Picks up three. DJ Calhoun with the tackle. You won't see a whole lot of tempo out of the Roadrunner offense. They're really more of a downhill running style of an offense. When the quarterback's under center, you'll see screens and draws and max protection deals. And then they can go into the gun like they're in now where it's your basic spread offense. Third down and seven from the 11. Rhodes motions out of the backfield. Now quarterback Sturm says, no, you got to go to the other side. <laughs> Some confusion apparently. Play clock at three. Sturm gets it off in time. Now pressured, rolling out. Still looking, throws towards the pylon. Coming back for it. Caught. They're saying a touchdown for Rhodes. I don't know if the ball broke the plane, but the official was right in front of it. He threw it right to the pylon. Uh, got to tell you, Rhodes was open early, too. But I'm with you, Ray, watching it in real time. I don't know if the ball ever crossed the plane, did it? That's the question. You know, we'll take a look at it a couple times here and try to make a, a decision. A great move by Sturm initially to get free. And now he keeps his eyes downfield. That's outstanding. Hard to tell from that angle where exactly the football was, but I'm more inclined to think that was a touchdown after that look. Oh, that's tough. If you don't have a camera running right down that goal line, you're not going to be able to overturn those things. There just isn't a look that will, will verify that. And so you have to go with a call on the field. So it's going to stand. And the extra point gives UTSA a 14 to 3 lead with a minute 43 to play in the first quarter. And the Roadrunners are able to take advantage of the Balaj misplay on the punt and the ASU turnover. Uh, Rhodes was open right from the beginning. And, and Dalton Sturm wasn't really looking for him. But when he did find him, he threw a strike right at that front pylon. And the official, I'm, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He was right there on it. He was stationed on the goal line. I'm going to say great call there, and that's a touchdown. There's, there's really no way any look we have. That, that's six. We'll take it. Now I'm with you on the official being right down the line, but looking at that again, yeah. I still don't think the ball crossed the goal line. That was my initial thought. Yeah. But it's it's bang bang, and we had no definitive look. So either way, a, a great job of capitalizing on the turnover. The Balage muff on the punt put the Roadrunners in great field position, and then Dalton Sturm gets it into the end zone in three plays. Well, that gets to your point right at the top of the telecast tonight, Ray, and that is, yeah, two and zero Arizona State, but they're on the road for the first time. It's a different deal, a different world. Balazs back to receive the kick. Again, no Tim White tonight. Out with the bad ankle. Portillo's kickoff. And that's going to be deep enough that Balazs will take a knee. While we have a moment, let's check in with the studio and send it to Chris Cotter. Chris. Chris, appreciate it here in San Antonio. Minute 43 left first quarter. UTSA. With a 14-3 lead over Arizona State as Manny Wilkins brings the Sun Devils offense back out on the field for a third time. Bit of a shocker, especially the way this Roadrunner defense has started ball games. Uh, they, they've been pretty good here uh, thus far in this first quarter. Pulled by Wilkins, being chased now, throws an incomplete in the direction of Harvey. Nice pressure by Kala Effa, the linebacker, triggering and... and Put the pressure on Wilkins, made him get rid of it a little sooner than he wanted to, and there was no one to throw it to. Covered up downfield as well. Now Balage comes in as the back. Cody Cole, the tight end, goes in motion. Dump it off to Balage, trying to get him to the edge. Brought down by Tedrick McGee. Up to the 30. Those short little passes to the outside are really a modern version of sweeps. They, they toss it out there, and it's, it's basically a running play. Gain five, so it's a third down and five for ASU. Looks like Nick Ralston checked into the backfield. You got McGee and Harry there at the bottom of your screen manned up. 
Here comes the blitz. Wilkins. Sack back at the 28 of the Kale Bass. Mikael Bass out of St. Louis, Missouri, CBC High School, and it's fourth down. And watch number 42, Bass. It's just relentless work and pressure. He never gave up. He kept coming. He beat the block of Ralston, and that, to me, is on the quarterback, Wilkins. You've got to get rid of that football. Right now, the Roadrunners are pumped up and excited. I go yeah. back to that Davis hit that got things rolling for him. Ad hoc punting for ASU, high punt, and again a fair catch called for, and late adjustment by Taylor to make the fair catch at the 27, a 44-yard punt with no return. Taylor has a touchdown catch so far tonight, and this 14-3 lead for UTSA with just 22 seconds left in the first quarter. And Dalton Sturm has come out with a hot hand here, seven for nine for 74 yards and a pair of touchdowns early on as you see the, the numbers as far as ball control. This is if Frank Wilson could have laid out a script, you're watching it right now. Arizona State ran 95 plays last week. And scored 68 points. Right, well, they're on a pace for 52 plays tonight. Give it to Rhodes, Jalen Rhodes. For just one, and it was Latu with the tackle. And that's going to take us to the end of the first quarter. But, Ray, if UTSA could script a first quarter, it probably would go similar to the one we just saw as they have a 14-3 to lead. Yeah, and they, they came out ready to play, and they got things going early on. And it's a shocker in the making. Dalton Sturms finding a touchdown pass there. And then that big hit was the one that really kind of turned things around for this football team. 14 to 3, Roadrunners over the Sun Devils. UTSA first year head coach Frank Wilson his team leading 14 3 as we start the second quarter in that first quarter for UTSA 105 yards of total offense the quarterback Sturm responsible for 100 of it 74 passing yards and 26 rushing yards and uh, Dalton Sturm wasn't happy with the way he played last week in fact he got pulled out for pretty much the entire third quarter they just want him to take a look at things from the sideline, but he's come out slinging tonight. Yeah. Second and nine, finds a wide open Shaq Williams, the tight end, will have a first down up to the 43, wrestled down by Armand Perry. And DJ Calhoun had the coverage on that, but he kind of got picked, but it was his own deal. He knocked down the, in, the outside receiver coming inside rather than pursuing the man he should have had coverage on. And that left that tight end, Williams, wide open. 13-yard gain, first down marked at the 42-yard line of UTSA. And Sun Devils showing a blitz. Fullback Andrew King into the ball game for the first time. Hand off Rhodes, short side of the field, and a battle to get a little something. Looked like nothing initially, but he'll pick up about three. You know, UTSA, their starting fullback, Caleb Stewart, injured last week. He is out now for the rest of the season, it appears. So that adjusts things at fullback. Andrew King, now the starting fullback. Jalen Rhodes, a sophomore. He and Jarvion Williams, very similar physically, both 5'9", around 200 pounds. Yeah, similar that, in a lot of ways. Yeah, I, I may say Williams is just a, a, a tad bit quicker. Sturm has it batted down. Tried to set up a tight end screen there. He's looking for Trevor Stevens. But that one got knocked away. Oh, nice discipline by the Sun Devil defense in reading that screen. And they got burned earlier on one. This time the defense was ready and waiting. And third down at seven. And the Roadrunners 45 yard line. It's coming off the edge. Sturm off the hands of a wide open Greg Campbell. 
And Sturm threw his fastball there, and that went, you're right, right through the hands of Campbell, who he would still be running, I, I'm believing, had he caught this football. The corner blitz comes from the top side, and so Sturm knows the heat's on. He zips it out there, and that's one where Sturm, he needs a little help. <laughs> he, I like how he handled that. You know what? You don't need to embarrass anybody. Uh, Greg Campbell Jr. is well aware of what happened, and he, he dropped the football, so there's no sense in humiliating a guy. Johnny Roots is punting for UTSA. Gump Hayes back for the Sun Devils. Bear catch called for, and he takes it at the 16. 13-32 left in this first half from San Antonio, and UTSA leads Arizona State 14-3. Still early second quarter in San Antonio, UTSA, the 14-3 lead. Coming up, our Saturday night football game tomorrow, presented by Wells Fargo, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Pac-12 matchup between USC Trojans and Heisman hopeful Christian McCaffrey and seventh-ranked Stanford. It also streams live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. ASU takes over. Last two drives have each been three and outs. Bellage cutting it out left. Block on the edge from Harry, but can't turn the corner for much as fellow freshman Tedrick McGee out there. This McGee's a, a football player. We've seen him make a couple of nice plays tonight. The true freshman fighting off a block and getting back in there and tripping him up. And there is a roadrunner player down on the 15-yard line. That's Kevin Strong, the defensive lineman. Sophomore. They attend to strong. That last run for Arizona State going for five yards prior to that, Ray. Their last ten plays for Arizona State had gone for only 12 total yards. So sophomore Kevin Strong of UTSA being attended to and will step aside. Kevin Strong got off under his own power, but Ray looked like he took some friendly fire from fellow defensive end Marcus Davenport. Yeah, Marcus Davenport is going to be pursuing the football. He's going to hit Strong right in the kidney with the knee. And more guys get hurt from friendly fire in football games than you would imagine. And that was a whale of a shot, and Strong seems to be shaking it off. Hopefully we'll see him back in this ball game. Second down at five for Arizona State. Balaj is the back. Hand it off to Balaj, running right. Gets to the edge. A help from the block from Gamage, but then is upended. And Jordan Moore. It was an interesting story himself. Moore is a graduate transfer. Started his career at TCU. Also was involved in track as a hurdler. Went to LSU where he participated in track only and now is here with UTSA. Balach uses some moves to maneuver across the 40 to the 41. Michael Egwagu bringing him down to pick up a seven. You know, Jordan Moore, you mentioned he was involved in track. That, that's underselling well, it a little bit he's there. He's been it, a brother? Big 12 and SEC champion, yes. That's pretty good. Melange again. This time he's going to have the first down up to the 45. Nate Gaines had to come up and make that tackle. Nice cut by Balage. That's one of the things that we really haven't talked much about is his vision and ability to see where those cuts are and then get there in a hurry. Melange checks out. Demario Richard back in for the Sun Devils. And here's the carry for Richard trying to go somewhere but can as he's met in the backfield by Ben Kane and then Eric Banks helped out a loss of two. Nice job up front by Banks. And Banks is going to fight the block off and then stay with it and then get up in there and finish the play. Boom. Uh, I like that. Uh, that's good defensive play. And there was nowhere to go on the outside. Uh, this uh, Roadrunner defense is playing some very good football for Pete Golding, their defensive coordinator in his first year. Look in Harry's direction. Wilkins taking a shot for him, and Harry has it in stride. He's headed towards the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona State. There is a flag down back near the line of scrimmage, so hold on. 
opponent. That's complete to end field. And it's going against Arizona State. This one is coming back, and it takes away a pretty oh, pass from Wilkins. Back, it would have been a 57-yard touchdown. Yeah, and Tedrick McGee gets a free lesson. The cornerback, he got his head around a little too soon, and that's when Harry got the separation. However, with the, with the flag, it's all for naught. Sometimes you need some breaks, and that one the, the Roadrunners got. The holding call will bring it back. It would have been a 57-yard touchdown for Nikhil Harry. It was interesting. We talked to Pete Golding about the, the uh, threat of a receiver, and we asked him if he was going to double Tim White and things like that. He said, no way. It, it's, it's Nikhil Harry is the guy we're going to double more than anyone else. Well, that last play tells you why. And as it turns out, White not playing tonight. And they want uh, Manny Wilkins wants the play clock reset. It's down to seven. And I, I agree with him. Now they have done so. Good heads up move by Wilkins. I mean, that's a veteran move by a quarterback to get himself a fresh 25. Wilkins taking another shot. This one for Cameron Nick. Smith that holds up. Who's got it? It's picked off. Nate Gaines. A jump ball, and it looked like Smith may have had it for a moment, but Gaines is the one that winds up with it, and it's the second Arizona State turnover tonight. Saw it coming, Mark. Gaines was sitting out there like a center fielder, just getting under a, a can of corn. They timed it up nicely and went up and then took it away. That ball's got to be thrown outside the numbers. You see it's thrown right on the numbers. You throw it outside the numbers, now you, that guy's got a lot longer way to go to be involved. So you got to put that as much on Cam Smith for not running the route wide enough as you do on the quarterback. So Gaines, who had three picks last year, gets his first of this season. Gaines is their leading returning tackler. 76 tackles a year ago, third best on the team, and had nine last week against Colorado State. First down, Roadrunners from their own 30. Sturm, pump fake. Now he's in trouble and is wrapped up and sacked back at the 26. Renell Wren, number 95, getting to him as well as JoJo Wicker in a loss of four. Marcus Ball is the one who made that play. He faked the blitz off that edge, and, uh, and uh, Dalton Sturm saw that. So he's like, oh, I got a free one outside, and that's what he went for. But Ball didn't blitz. He backed out. Kind of lulled him into it. There was nowhere to go with the ball for Sturm at that point. Reverse. Fake. Faked it. And Sturm with some open running room. Runs for the first down. Up to the 42-yard line. They faked the reverse. He kept it. 16-yard gain and a first down for the Roadrunners. Dalton Sturm is faster than what people think and I love the, the deal here everyone's thinking I was yelling reverse I know that defense down there saw it coming Sturm with the little fake and then some open field running ability John Pays had a shot to get him before the marker but missed him and it's a first down for UTSA at their own 42 yard line they put it on the ground Jarvion Williams bounced off the pile and then as he went left got wrapped up by Marcus Ball and a Gain of about three up to the 45. That's one of the things that Williams, because of his diminutive stature in terms of height, at just five foot nine, uh, it, it reminds me back when I played against Barry Sanders. Uh, one of the biggest things Barry had going for him was you couldn't see him amongst all the tall trees in there, and then he's so sudden and quick, hopping out of there, and you get a similar effect. Now I'm not saying that Jarvion Williams is, is Barry Sanders, but he's a similar stature, and, and that's hard to find sometimes. Second down and seven. Williams comes in motion to the near side, and here's Sturm taking a shot for him, but it's well defended by Gump Hayes that time. And I think Sturm intentionally threw that one where maybe his guy could be the only one to get it because uh, that was a solid position by Robinson. I really am impressed with the way Dalton Sturm has come out and played. Now, he played very well in the opener. Last week, he had his struggles. There was no question about it. He almost relapsed a little bit. And we talked to Coach Wilson about it. And he said, you know, it might have been, uh, you know, everyone patting you on the back, patting you on the back. You start to listen to that, and you think you're a little something that you aren't. And you lose. He also had a lot of media uh, obligations after that. I think he went back to square one in this week in practice, and it's manifesting tonight. 
Sturm in a crowd taking a shot. Again, well defended by Gump Hayes for Marquez McNair. It's a going for Robbie Robinson, the cornerback once again, trying to pick on that true yeah. freshman. He had none of it again. That's right. Uh, maybe they'll try someone else next time. But, you, you know, you get a young guy out there, and you, you want to test him out. I mean, that's, that's what people do. Gump Hayes is back deep now to receive the punt of Yanni Rutsis. Fair catch taken at the 18. There is a flag. And we'll see about the flag. Uh, it, it's in a strange spot, really, on a punt. Holding by the receiving team. 10 yard penalty from the dead ball spot. First down. Well, that's going to go against Arizona State and hurt that starting field position. 9-11 left first half here in San Antonio. ESPN College Football brought to you by Hyundai. Tower of the Americas, 750 feet tall. We're not far from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, UTSA there during the break. Dancing it up. They feel 720 feet tall themselves right now. We got a good first quarter. You got to ride the emotion in football. After the penalty, Arizona State begins at their own nine yard line. Wilkins coming down the sideline and it's grabbed by Cameron Smith all the way up near midfield. Looked like good coverage by Devron Davis, but a great throw by Wilkins and a long pickup of 38 yards. It was a wonderful throw. He dropped this one into the bucket. And then that's what I'm talking about there. They practice the deep throws, trying to throw it into a barrel, get some air under it, and drop it where you want it. Here's another one. Wilkins just a hair underthrown for Cameron Smith. Again, Davis with the coverage. We're going to see this all night because that is the the call that the quarterback that you're going to make every time you get a press on a corner like that you're going to give your guy a chance to beat their guy one on one especially when you have a, a quarterback of Wilkins ilk who can drop that deep ball down in there. Hand off Richard breaks a tackle oh. and got into the secondary and nearly ran over the defender there and plows his way all the way up to the UTSA 41 a first down he, wrote, he, not, he broke three tackles on that one and rolled the dude over at the end that shows you the power at 510 219 pounds that Richard brings to the table give it right back to Richard straight ahead to the 36 yard line and they're going to go fast and they're going to keep running straight at this road runner defense and they're angry right now are the Sun Devils Broken up, intended for Jalen Harvey. That was an RPO, Mark. Another one, and then Nikhil Bailey comes up and breaks it up. They are gambling. The Roadrunners are gambling on the corners right now, and so far, so good. But at some point, it might just get them. Third and four. They're one of four on third down tonight are the Sun Devils. Wilkins out of reach, a diving attempt late, but really no shot for Harry. Good press again by McGee on the outside, and although he didn't have the coverage on Harry, he did disrupt the timing. You know, Wilkins led that thing out there a little bit quicker. That's where it normally is in practice. But if your receiver gets held up at the line a step or two, that's going to mess with that timing, and I think that's what Todd Graham is talking to Wilkins about right now. Well, Zane Gonzalez of Arizona State kicked a career-high 54-yarder to begin the game tonight. This is a 54-yard attempt as well, so he'll try to equal his career high. A little bit of issue on the hole, but he gets it down and plenty of distance. 
And Zane Gonzalez now has two 54-yard field goals tonight for the six ASU points. They'll take those points, Mark, and, and that's great to get on the board. But right now, the Roadrunners have the advantage and the momentum in this football game. Fourteen to six, UTSA leading with 8:02 left in this first half. Coming up Saturday, noon Eastern, nine Pacific, on ABC. A huge ACC clash between top ten teams. Freshman DeAndre Francois leads second-ranked Florida State against Lamar Jackson, number ten Louisville. College football presented by Walmart, also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. And how about the hurdling Lamar Jackson? And then we got to see Manny Wilkins of Arizona State a couple of times, one against Northern Arizona, and then also against Texas Tech. So we've had some hurdling quarterbacks. That's going to be down for a touchback. It'll come out to the 25. Well, we uh, coach mentioned, a heart attack. Though. Yeah, you know, we mentioned earlier uh, about uh, the hurdler, Jordan Moore, for UTSA. He knows all about hurdling. So we asked him to judge the hurdling of what you just saw from those two quarterbacks, what he thought was the best. Lamar Jackson, that play was pretty impressive. To go over the top of somebody and hurdle like that and then score the touchdown, that's a phenomenal athlete. But I have to give it to my man Wilkins. To go over the top with that world-class trail leg even has me scared and how hot he got off the ground. And to do it two weeks in a row, that's a phenomenal athlete. We thank Jordan Moore for that. He sent that to us via his iPhone, and he liked Manny Wilkins. Pretty athletic from both those guys, no yeah, question. That, that trail leg was up there about six feet in the air. And Dalton Sturm, who hasn't had any hurdling tonight, but has had some decent runs. That's incomplete for Stewart. Yeah, had he been able to reel it in, he had he dragged the toe. It would have been a completion, but he just couldn't make the catch. But a great throw by Dalton Sturm, who has been outstanding tonight. There's a flag at the 36, 37 yard line, or is that just some debris on the field, <laughs> kind of tough to tell. Might be that pinata thing. Yeah, they were yeah beating I think up that's earlier. what it is. I think that no was the pinata. <laughs> <laughs> no flag, just some debris from the uh, timeout entertainment. Sturm, near side, dangerous pass, but it is caught by Josh Stewart. And I'm sure the eyes got wide for Marcus Ball, who was thinking about a pick and going the other way. I can't believe Dalton Sturm threw this football. That's a gutsy throw with a lot of smoke on it. He just got it out of the reach of Ball. And now, after dropping one on the previous play, Stewart makes an amazing catch. Well, first down, UTSA. They gained up to their own 37-yard line. Sturm goes under center, and he's going to hand it off. Jarvion Williams straight ahead. For just a yard or so to the 38, Marcus Ball involved in that play as well. One thing that this Roadrunner offense has avoided that was costly to them last week was negative plays in the running game. You just pick up one or two yards, you're going to be all right. But you get knocked back, and they, they got hit by blitz after blitz. They only have four negative yardage plays, and I'm including no game plays in that as well. And they finished with minus one yard rushing last week against Colorado State. Williams, nice catch to the 44-yard line where he'll be about four yards from the first down. Picks up six. And I'm just continuing to be uh, impressed by Dalton Sturm. Not, not only the accuracy and the, the arm strength that he's shown thus far, but the command and the way he's running this football team. You can see the guys have confidence in him. He has confidence in himself. And they're moving the football tonight. Sturm from Goliad, Texas, a small town between San Antonio and Corpus yeah. Christi. Graduating class of 92. That's that students. Yeah, not the year. Right. <laughs> Catch. McNair. Marquez McNair, who's the nephew of Steve Air McNair and Fred McNair, who's now the head coach at Alcorn State. First down. Gain a seven to the 49 of ASU. A very deliberate play, uh, pace by this Roadrunner offense. They want to eat up clock 
as well as continue to move the football, and they've done an outstanding job of that, and that also goes to Dalton Sturm and his ability to control that. Sturm in trouble. Able to keep his feet, avoid a tackler, and on the run gets a help from a block along the sideline, and he has a first down run all the way to the 37. Rennell Wren had a shot at him in the pocket and missed him. It's a 12-yard game. And Dalton Sturm was 166 pounds when he graduated from high school. Under-recruited because of the size. He's put on 30 pounds. He's gotten faster throughout the, the off-season training programs, and he is very good in traffic finding a way to get through there. Nice block from Jabrice Taylor. Wide receiver on the edge. Here's a run for Rhodes. Falls forward up to the 30. Ramon Perry grabbed him by the legs. A gain of seven. DJ Calhoun, the inside linebacker for Arizona State, blitzed on that, but he missed. And when you miss, you're the second level guy. There's no one left in the second level. You get up to that third level, and that's where Perry had to make the tackle. Well, second and short here, second and three for UTSA. Let's see what they decide to call from the 30 of Arizona State with under five minutes to play in the half. Rhodes runs right into the teeth. JoJo Wicker and loses a couple. I'm going to call that the first mistake, uh, big mistake by Dalton Sturm pre-snap. That blitz was obvious. It was coming. The running play was right into the teeth of it. You get out of that play. And he did not, and they paid for it. So it was second and short. Now it turns into third and five. They'd uh, like to roll him out and get him an easy pitch and catch to the edge. Let's see if they go with that on this third down. Sid McNair in motion. Sturm looking in his direction. Throws underneath. There's a flag over on the far sideline. The DJ Calhoun on the coverage of the pass That's attempt to Taylor. Offense number four. Five yard penalty, third down. And when you go in motion, you cannot go towards the line of scrimmage until the snap. And Marquez McNair got himself a little bit of an early start in that regard. Spotted at the 37 yard line. Where it'll be third down and 10. And again, there's really no hurry, even though there's no huddle for this Roadrunner offense. Dalton Sturm grabbed by the back, but. Breaks free and throws off one foot out of bounds just to get rid of it. That's the, the strength that Dalton Sturm has, has built. You know, it's interesting. His name, Dalton, his father named him after the Patrick Swayze character in Roadhouse. And, of course, the uh, obvious line that follows, uh, I thought you'd be bigger. Well, <laughs> he has gotten himself bigger. And who can forget Sam Elliott and the role of Wade Garrett? We start talking Roadhouse, I'm going to get oh, more yeah, excited. I, that's all you. I love me Roadhouse. Some ways. Yeah, baby. There's a number of uh, youngsters, college guys that are about Dalton Sturm's age that are named Dalton for that very reason. For the Patrick Swayze character. That's going to bounce and be down inside the 10 by UTSA. 309 to play in this first half from San Antonio. Coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report, Chris Cotter, Joey Galloway, and Danny Cannell in the studio. And that top 10 tilt in the Vol is going to be big this weekend between Florida State and Louisville. A lot of contenders hitting the road. And Saturday's Pac-12 preview as well. All coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report. I'm sure they're going to weigh in on this game, which is shocking to most people. Uh, everyone who looked at this from the outside said, oh, this, this should be a walkover for the Sun Devils. Well, somebody forgot to tell USTA. And they're going to blitz up top. 
And it off. Up the middle for five yards. To Mario Richard. Mikael Bass will get credit for the tackle. Right, speaking of giving credit, I want to give a lot to Pete Golding, this defensive coordinator for the Roadrunners. Really enjoyed our conversation with him, this 3-3 defense that he, he's put in. He's uh, just one of the bright young minds in college football. And he came from Southern Miss. He's going up against Chip Lindsey, the new offensive coordinator at Arizona State, who was with them at Southern Miss. But he's going head-to-head -head against each other tonight. Wrapped up at the 16. Richard once again. Yeah, Pete, Pete Golding was, was telling, we asked him, have you talked to Chip at all this week? He's, oh, yeah, I've been texting him, <laughs> sending him pictures of this, that, and the other thing, trying to mess with his buddy. You know, they were young coaches together, and their, their families really meshed together well. Their wives got together, the kids together, and the great relationships you build in football, that's what it's all about. Third down and two. Yeah, we'll see about the spot, but there is a too. flag, yes. It's going to be offsides defense. This is a free one. It'll be a good enough for a first down for Arizona State. Number 27, five-yard penalty results in a first down. And the freshman cornerback, Tedrick McGee, offsides. Yeah, you know, sometimes you get up there and you're pressing a receiver and you want to get heavy on him because you know you got help behind you and you encroach on that line of scrimmage. That's just a, a young kid mistake that I'm sure he'll clean up. He's up there at the top of the screen again, Tressie. Under two minutes to go, Arizona State. First down and in the backfield. Wilkins somehow escapes, avoids a big hit, and out of all that, he'll gain three yards and avoid the physical punishment. It looked like he was about to endure a couple of times. Yeah, Ta Effa, he misses this sack. Number 55, that, that you dream about those kind of run-throughs, but Wilkins, he, he can make you miss in a phone booth. Pretty good uh, display of running. He hands it off, running right, and that one is quickly stopped. Balaj, tackled by Devron Davis. A loss of a yard. A great call by Pete Golding. He left the corner in and had that wide receiver covered by a safety over the top, and that put Devron Davis right where he needed to be. And UTSA is going to use a timeout. They would like to get the football back with a minute 10 left in the first half. And very aggressive to call the timeout to try to get the football back. And I've been impressed, and we've talked about Pete Golding and the things that that this defense has been able to do. You've got great coverage from a true freshman pressing out on the edge, and then that Davis hit really got things exciting, and then they come up with a sack as well, and this defense has been outstanding throughout the course of this ball game, and of course, the, you take away the Nate Gaines interception. I, I am so impressed. You're talking about an offense, Mark, that scored 68 points yes. last week. And uh, they, they only can come up with six here in the first half thus far against a team that, that, that they expected to have a lot more success against. UTSA has never beaten a Pac-12 team. The only Pac-12 team they played previously is Arizona. They've lost to them three times, including once in Tucson. Big third down here. Six guys, who's going to come? Four come, now three as one dropped off, and here's Wilkins looking to run, and he is going to pick up the first down with a slide up across the 35, up near the 37. Tao Effa had another shot at him in the backfield and missed him. Well, Tao Effa is playing what you, you call basically uh, a spy look. He's supposed to be able to get Wilkins. Unfortunately, Wilkins is just too, too quick. Wilkins is going to take a deep shot, throwing off one foot, and a jump ball is... Tipton incomplete. Cameron Smith locked up with Nikhil Bailey. Great coverage in the secondary. Initially, there was nowhere to go for Manny Wilkins, and the ball is not coming out of his hands quickly enough. And the, I think the big reason is the press on those corners. It takes away the RPO game where you, you call a run and a pass, but if those guys are pressed, you, you don't usually, you usually stay with the run, and that's what they're forcing them to do. And then they pack the box and stop the run. It's a great plan. 
Here comes the blitz. The linebacker coming, and here's the pass to the sideline, a diving attempt. And that is hauled in by Harry. A completion near the marker. It should be a first down. Kill Harry's been very impressive as well. I mean, this is a, a ball that you, you got to lay out and make that catch and reach for. That's pretty good stuff there. Setting up a screen. And a little high for Bellage and incomplete. Looked like Harry got the hands under that ball when we looked at the replay, but as soon as the play, next play was executed. And Chip, stood. Chip Lindsay up in the box calling this game. He's struggling right now based on what this the look that they're getting. And he tried to mix a screen in there. And uh, USTA only rushed two guys. I mean, right now, his good buddy, Pete Golding, is, is uh, one of ahead. That's how F is showing blitz. He drops off. Wilkins throws underneath, and it's caught by Gamage. Gamage lowers his shoulder, and he'll have a first down to the 40. They'll stop the clock to move the chains. With 26 seconds left. Arizona State has a couple of timeouts, so they'll use one here and have one left. I think it's very important for Arizona State to get points in this drive, and by points, I mean six and an extra point on top of that. They need that just for their confidence, shake the cobwebs, uh, because right now they're getting they're getting hit in the mouth a little bit and they, they've been stymied throughout this game and the harder hitting team is the Roadrunners from my vantage point and uh, that surprises me and I think Todd Graham he ain't not too happy about it either. Arizona State has never played a Conference USA team. They've played some teams that have been in Conference USA at different times but not while they were actually in the conference and this is a matchup and Coach Graham and the previous coach Larry Coker set up. Well, and coach Graham wants to wants to play in Texas. Yes. He believes that if you're going to recruit in a place, you want to play there. And this will be this is the fourth time that they've played in Texas during his tenure. Prior to that, they hadn't played here in 31 years. One timeout left for ASU. A first down at the 40-yard line of UTSA. Here comes the blitz. It's picked up well. Wilkins trying to throw underneath. He might have gotten there a little early. Gaines still made a great play yeah. reacting and coming up. He, he thought he had an interception, except that the receiver moved in front of him at the last second. Clock becoming a factor here. 21 ticks left here in the first half. Here is the freshman receiver at the top of the screen. They rush for shovel pass. Bellage squirts his way through another hole across the 30, up near the 27. A first down to stop the clock with 11 seconds left to move the change. And ASU will use their final time out of the half. Aguagu with the tackle there in the open field. The senior leader of this defense had 12 tackles last week. And he, he might be their best defensive player, but they've had guys playing well all over the field tonight. As you mentioned, Arizona State would love to find the end zone here, but we've already seen Zane Gonzalez hit not one but two career-high 54-yard field goals. So and they might have had another seven, eight yards on the end of them too. Which, by the way, the two 50-plus-yard field goals for Gonzalez in this game—it's the first time. In ASU football history, that one of their kickers has made two 50 plus yard field goals in a single game. Pretty impressive. Uh, but I will tell you this if your highlights from a half are, are too long field goals, probably yeah, not that's, the that's, best. Yeah, that's good for your kicker and everything. But as far as the football team, that's a statement in itself. Well, the two 54 yarders from Zane Gonzalez tonight has accounted for the scoring for ASU. They'd like to add more than a field goal here, but have no timeouts remaining. 11 seconds left and a first down at the Roadrunners 28. Wilkins looking towards Harry. He's going to take a shot for him in the end zone. Diving. He got it. What a catch. Touchdown. I don't know if you can cover him better than that. But the, the, the one arm 
with a one handed grab. This is a great job of concentrating on the football and regardless of what the defenders doing to you you pull it in. And you can see the freshman working on him McGee and he actually had a hold of Harry's right arm. So he said ah, I still got one left. I'll reel it in with the left one. <laughs> Amazing. They're going to go for two it looks like. Spectacular catch by the freshman the kill. Harry and you I, see why he's such a highly recruited athlete. I do not like this. I do not believe in going for two and, until late in the fourth quarter. You, you're chasing points. You might need that one point later in this game. It's closer than anybody thought. Well, let's see how it works out for the Sun Devils trying to tie it up. Wilkins lets it go and it's in the corner of the end zone. It was caught but out of bounds. So they failed to convert. Marcus Davenport was putting on the pressure. It was caught, caught by Jalen Harvey, but out of bounds. Yeah, well, just remember one point. It was uh, not put on the board. It, it would have been easy to do so. We'll see if that affects this game later on. I, I set it up front, Mark. I, I just don't believe in it philosophically. Yeah, very early in the game. We'll be chasing points. It is a 12-play drive. It went 91 yards in just over three minutes. And not only that, you, you had a, an emotional lift after getting that touchdown late as we'll take a look at it again but you know now you, you go into the locker room having just failed on something after a great play you, you, you kind of suck your own momentum out of your own sales I, I don't like it I'll let it go and can't take away from that catch from the, the five star recruit Nikhil Harry freshman out of Chandler Arizona His, uh, pretty good night I would say yeah his uh, second touchdown catch in his collegiate career he had one last week against Texas Tech and the team high six catches in that game and you look at the total yardage better second quarter for ASU here's the squib from Zane Gonzalez get on that football Brent Winnigan has to pick it up and Winnigan comes to the near side and is wrapped up at the 43, but time's going to elapse here in the first half. A late touchdown for Arizona State, but failed with the two-point conversion to try to tie it. And it's a two-point game, 14-12 UTSA leading Arizona State. Lexus halftime report coming up with Chris Cotter, Joey Galloway, and Danny Cannell after these messages. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. We're about ready to start the second half. The team out of Conference USA, UTSA, leading Arizona State 14 to 12, along with former Central Michigan and Buffalo Bills linebacker Ray Bentley. I'm Mark Dealey and Ray in that first half. I think everybody outside of the UTSA players and program a little surprised. We saw a very physical UTSA defense. Yeah, and that's really what to me is the difference in this ball game. And it started with Devron Davis just lighting up Manny Wilkins. That got everybody excited to get a couple looks at it. And then the interception over the top, a great play by Nate Gaines. And I think Dalton Sturm has been outstanding. The touchdown pass to Rhodes. But Arizona State answers late as Nikhil Harry on the end of a Manny Wilkins touchdown pass closes them to within two. So it's 14 12 here as we start the third. Let's take a look at tonight's player spotlight brought to you by the U.S. Navy. Dalton Sturm in that first half. Impressive numbers. Had some uh, important rushes as well. Yeah, I think he played extremely well, maybe tailed off a little bit towards the end of the second quarter, but he has had great command of this offense. He's been extremely accurate with his throws. He's been very elusive in the pocket, and then when he does get outside, he hits that gas pedal, and he's played a great game thus far. UTSA will get the football to begin the second half. Dalton Sturm, as you mentioned, 11 for 19 in that first half. 112 yards, a couple of touchdowns, and the 50 yards on the ground. Zane Gonzalez, who has a couple of 54-yard field goals in this game with that last one, became the Pac-12 record holder now for career points 
He's at 416. Also, what he does well is his touchback rate. Well, oh. he's going to bring it out, and a mistake there. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. And, the, you know, the guy who was in front of the returner needs to grab him and say no. That's Jordan Moore who decided to bring it out. And that's where you got to tell you got to even grab him yourself and tell him do not go. And that was uh, Blake Dean who's the backup fullback who was back there. Dean should have made a tackle. <laughs> if you tackle your own guy in the end zone I don't think they're going to call safety. At least wrap him up. So instead of beginning at their own 25 UTSA instead begins at their own seven. Let's call it the eight. And they're going to lose more there. Williams. Williams tackled for a loss of a couple. Amilatu making a big play in there, getting off a block. And this is an opportunity for this Sun Devil defense to get this Roadrunner offense backed up and get good field position for their offense and set the tone here for the second half. ASU rushes four. Stern from his own end zone. Rolling out. Throws and completes it to the 15 where Kerry Thomas will be pushed out of bounds at the 16. Quiet first half from Thomas. But I like the way he kept working for his quarterback. Everyone on the Roadrunner sideline, their heart goes in their throats when Sturm's back in his own end zone, uh, running around trying to make something happen. And his receiver, Thomas, stayed with him and pulled him out of a bad situation. And that gain of 10 makes it third down and two. And sent McNair in motion. Sturm throws for Williams. Caught and he has the first down and more down the sideline. Makes a move at the 40. Jervion Williams caught at the Arizona State 38 yard line. Amui Akola, a 47 yard run. This is another really nice throw from Dalton Sturm. They love the out routes on third and short. They zip it out there and the strength of Williams, he makes one man miss and then watch him cover up the football at the end. That's a smart football player. Laiu Moakiola catching him, but the 47-yard run. Now Jalen Rhodes has come in. Sturm keeps it, pulled it late, and will pick up two. Ronell Wren wrestled him down. Take a look at this move one, one more time, and that's what you call putting on the brakes <laughs> and then starting it back up again. And the vision that he has, you know, that guy was coming from behind him. Great peripheral vision from Jarvion Williams. Jalen Rhodes has come out of the game limping, has gone to the bench. Jarvion Williams, after that run, took a playoff, but now he has, has to be reinserted right back in. Stern pressured. Look at the speed. Wow. Inside the 10, makes a cut, and he dives into the end zone. Touchdown, UTSA. 34-yard gallop for the quarterback, Dalton Sturm, and a drive that began inside their own 10. They still turn into a touchdown. Sturm jumped out of, to me on film and watching and preparing for this game, the speed that he has. And he just hit the gas pedal again. Now he's going to wend his way through the front of the line, and then he hits the gas pedal, and then a nice little cutback move at the end. But there, there's nobody really that's going to catch that guy. Victor Falcone comes on for the extra point, and he knocks it through. Five plays, 92 yards in just over two and a half minutes. And Dalton Sturm's touchdown run makes it 21-12. Somewhere Wade Garrett is saying, nice job, Mio, because Dalton gets it into the end zone. Nine point lead now for UTSA, so it's a two score game with 12.25 left third quarter. The 34 yard touchdown run for the quarterback Dalton Sturm qualifies for Ray Bentley's explosive plays, which for Ray is any rush of 10 or more yards or pass 
of 15 or more. Well, Frank Selfo told us we need to not just go first down, second down, third down. They had 19 third down opportunities last week. That's way too many. They needed more explosive plays, and they've gotten them tonight. They've had just nine third downs thus far that they've had to try to convert, and you see the big plays that they've been able to put together. And, and I go back to it. I let it go, but I'm coming back to it. Todd Graham decided to go for two. Well, now this touchdown makes him two possessions down because he didn't kick that extra point. Balaj takes it from the goal line. A little bit of a juggle, but he collects it and gets up to the 21-yard line. Well, our week two Monday night football matchup has the 1-0 Eagles with rookie quarterback Carson Wentz coming off a really good game against the Browns. He'll take on Jay Cutler. And the Bears at Soldier Field, 8:15 Eastern on ESPN. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's at 6 Eastern, and it also streams live on Watch ESPN. Let's see what kind of adjustments Chip Lindsey, the offensive coordinator, has made for his offense after a sluggish first half. To Mario Richard, forward progress will get him. To the 23, so he picks up a couple. That was Anthony Hickey, the first to get to him, as well as Ben Kane and others. And Hickey stopped right up into the hole and filled it strong and stout like a linebacker should. Because Demario De Richard is a big load, he'll run you right over. Wilkins on second down, finds a wide open Cameron Smith, makes a move upfield, and then gets undercut at the 38 by an Bailey, but does have a first down, and that's a gain of 15. You look at the Arizona State offense, they've picked it up in the last two drives. Uh, they need to continue that. And they've changed the, the various things they're doing, and that's a change in itself there, having Manny Wilkins carry the football. And runs for a dozen yards or so there, make it 13 officially, and another first down for Arizona State. I, I think they need to go to their drop back passing game. And the RPOs aren't working particularly well because of the press of the corners are taking it away. They fake the jet sweep to Gamage, give it to Richard, who gives a stiff arm to a defender, and he'll run for a first down. Picks up about 11 to the 38. Jordan Moore had a shot at him. We got a stiff arm and nice run by Demario Richard. Physical run. And that's what I believe the Sun Devils need. They need to establish physical dominance because they have not had it. There's a, a Roadrunner player down on the field that's going to stop the action here. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by PlayStation View, live TV, no annual contract, and no surprise fees. Downtown San Antonio on a Friday night and a great football game going on right now here in the Alamo Dome. Pac-12, Arizona State getting a big battle from Conference USA's UTSA Roadrunners, 21-12, UTSA in front. It's good to see Baylin Baker, who did get up under his own power, and go to the sideline for the Roadrunners. First down, though, for the Sun Devils from the 38 of the Roadrunners, and a deep shot just out of reach of Harry, overshot by Manny Wilkins. And that is another RPO that the press coverage took away. Arizona State now has tried a deep ball eight times. They've hit on just three of them for 96 yards, one touchdown, one interception. And they're going to need to hook up on more of those, but the way this defense is playing, they're trying to take that away. Quick hand off Richard cuts it back. Or a gain of three to the 35. Iguagu pulled him down. Iguagu made a great read. He saw a run early, slid in behind the line of scrimmage, snaked his way down and made the tackle. Third down at seven. ASU tonight on third down. Two of six. Four wides in the game. Including Harry up top. Wilkins looking in his direction again. Had to stop for it, and it's broken up inside the 20 by Aeneas Hendricks. Great play by Hendricks getting his eyes back. It was going to be a 
you know, they've been taking the deep shots. The next one, oh, like, let's go back shoulder. That's what they tried to do to catch these guys. And Hendricks had his eyes in the right place. He almost picked that off. In fact, Harry turned into a pretty good defensive back to break that thing up. So we get another 54-yard field goal attempt, or 53 well, this time. This one looks like it'll officially be 53. Oh, count it. Gonzalez has already hit two tonight from 54 his career high. He's become the Pac-12 all-time leader in points at 416. Can he make it 419? It has the distance but goes left. Just a bit outside. So Gonzalez misses from 53, and Arizona State comes up empty. Yeah, it's tough to keep a guy out there and expect him to keep banging 50 plus yarders through. But give credit to the Roadrunner defense coming up with a stop. Just over five minutes gone here in the second half. UTSA leading Arizona State 21-12. Coming up on Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. It's a packed full matchup between the USC Trojans and Heisman hopeful Christian McCaffrey in seventh ring Stanford. It's also available streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. After the missed 53 yard attempt by Gonzalez, UTSA begins at their own 35 yard line. Williams motions out of the backfield. Quick pass out to him, but out of his hands. That is a forward pass incomplete. Rear drop, we haven't seen very many tonight from the Roadrunners, but we have seen a lot of offense, total offense, from the quarterback, Dalton Sturm. In fact, only five yards shy of the entire output of Arizona State. I'll tell you two things. Number one, Sturm's having a good game, and so is the Roadrunner defense. This is a team that had over 600 yards last week. Razzle Jet dazzle. sweep, reverse, they get it back to Wilkins, who throws to McNair, who was part of the reverse, and all that winds up going for six yards. <laughs> I love the, 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 the fact of trying something like this. Frank Wilson says, yeah, well, things are going good tonight. Let's take a chance and run the double reverse pitch back screen. And it was good for six, seven yards. <laughs> But, you know, guys, they practice that, those plays all week. And it really, you have to run them in the game, in my opinion, because it, it makes it fun. And, it, you know, it makes the guys pay attention when you put stuff like that in. And it could make a big difference in a ball game. Trips up top. Third down at six. Now motioning out wide is Thomas. Sturm steps up, but he's being harassed from behind. Somehow gets away, runs to the sideline, leaning in his... Out of bounds, right near the line of scrimmage. May actually lose a yard. JoJo Wicker had a chance at him and finally got to the sideline and pushed out. Dalton Sturm is, is half of a Houdini. I mean, I don't know how he got out of that thing. I started to look away because that, that was going to be a sack. There's no doubt. JoJo Wicker had him. But Sturm managed to get out of that grasp and didn't get the first down, but he avoided a, a bad play. That's the first three and out tonight for the offense, and they come after the punt from Rutas, who does get it away. That ball's live. Another and, muff. And for the second time tonight, Arizona State has turned it over on special teams, and UTSA's Aeneas Henricks recovers. Gump Hayes just, you know, he tried. I think he tried to run before he had possession of the football. Now, this is a difficult catch, uh, a punt that's, Tumbling end over end and is down below your knees. That's hard to grasp onto. And sometimes you might want to just stay away from that ball. But Gump didn't able to get it. Hayes and right there on the spot. It's going the other way. Another big play. Hendricks comes up big on special teams for this UTSA football team. Well, it was Balaj who was returning the punt the previous time in the first half when they turned it over. This time, Gump Hayes. Well, Balazs, compared to last week, obviously had eight touchdowns. Much quieter tonight. He does have 52 yards of total offense, but no TDs at this point. Sturm, though, has the UTSA offense back on the field. It strikes Jack Williams to the goal line. Is he in? Touchdown. 24-yard touchdown, and UTSA 
has opened up a 27 to 12 lead. This was a great call by Frank Salfo. They had been blitzing off the edge. So what does he do? He sneaks the tight end out of the backfield. It runs past the covers. There's nobody left. Now you got guys that are man to man down the field. Stevens gets a great block. And as soon as he gets inside that pylon, that's a touchdown. And the extra point makes it a 28 to 12 Roadrunners lead. Taking advantage of those takeaways make all the difference. Second catch of the night for Shaq Williams, but his first touchdown catch of the year. And what a great call. And then the execution, the blocking down the field, the tenacity. These Roadrunners mean business tonight. This is only the sixth season of football for UTSA. They're trying to beat a Pac-12 team for the first time in history. And they lead Arizona State 28-12. Still a lot of football to play. 8.20 to go third quarter from here at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. The thing that stands out to me, Mark, is I, I still think they are beating Arizona State to the punch. And the more physical tip football team will win nine out of ten times. Arizona State has turned it over three times tonight now. UTSA has not turned it over. Bellage from the goal line. Good head of steam. Steps over one defender, breaks another tackle. He's up to the 36-yard line. Nice return for Kalen Bellage. Bellage, though, was the punt returner on the first Arizona State turnover, but the last one was Gump Hayes. That set up the short field for UTSA. Put it on the ground. Hendricks picks it up. And then the very first play, a great call. Again, uh, Frank Selfo knows what he's doing up top. Ran that right into the face of the, where they've been blitzing off the edge. And take advantage of it. This is an Arizona State team that scored 68 points last week in beating Texas Tech 68-55. In that game, they had 14 possessions. Scored on 10 of those possessions. Tonight, eight possessions. They've scored on three. Up to the 41 for a gain of five for Harry. N nice hustle play by Ta Epa. I mean, he made, that's one of them sideline to sideline plays. This guy was a defensive lineman last year. Now he's playing inside linebacker, sideline to sideline. Wilkins puts it in the belly of Demario Richard, and he'll have a first down. Up over the 46-yard line. Frederick McGee, the freshman cornerback, coming up to make the stop. But a first down ASU, and they'll keep the tempo rolling. Belage has come in for Richard. And here is Belage. Changes direction, coming back the other way. Gets a block for Manny Wilkins. And then lost the football. But it looks like ASU got it back. And King Newton was the lineman who got there late, knocked the football out. And that's one of the things that'll happen to you when the ball is, when you're uh, making an open field play, changing directions and all those things like Balaj did, you forget about the football sometimes. And watch Newton just slap the football right there, well, before that, but knocked it out. And fortunately, Arizona State came up with it. That was Nikhil Harry. Nikhil Harry with the recovery. Almost the fourth ASU turnover tonight. What a catch by Harry. Had to reach for that, and now the run after the catch. He'll have a first down. All the way to the 32 of UTSA. That's a big kid, Nikhil Harry, at 6'4", 220, just as a true freshman. He's got a bright future. 15-yard gain for Harry. First down at the 33 of UTSA. Time for Wilkins. He's going to take a shot to the end zone. And wide and out of bounds, looking once again for the freshman Harry, who was well covered by Nate Gaines and McGee. McGee's played outstanding on the outside. He got beat deep for the one time, but other than that, he has totally shut down the RPOs of this offense, the run pass options, which was such a big part of their success last week. Wilkins now 3 of 10 on deep shots tonight. Here comes a blitz off the edge. Not a whole lot there for Arizona State on the run by Richard. 
This Roadrunner defense is turning loose the blitzes now. Uh, Pete Golding is dialing them up one after another. They're coming with the inside linebackers. They're coming out of the slot. We've seen corners come, safeties. He's just throwing the whole book at them. Two of seven on third down. This is a third and ten for the Sun Devils. Looks like they're coming again. They bring four. Wilkins on the run. Try to hurdle a defender. And that came down right on his face. Tal Effa coming up, and there's a UTSA player slow getting up. That is Ben Kane. Well, that hurdle thing can be dangerous, and <laughs> here's why. Because if you don't make it over there, have you ever tried to hurdle a hurdle? If you don't make no. it over, that's catastrophic. <laughs> and that's what happens here. Fact came down right down on his face mask on his head. Kane was the player for UTSA. A little slow getting up, but did. But here comes Gonzalez once again. This is a 45-yard attempt off the right hash. That one is away. It is true and through. That's almost a gimme for this guy. You know, I thought so at 53. <laughs> <laughs> so his third made field goal of the night. He's made two from 54, a miss from 53, and now a make from 45. And it's 28-15. Still, I consider that a win for the UTSA defense. When you force a team that scored 68 points last week and are you know, coming into the game, 10 touchdowns on 11 trips into the red zone, you force them to kick field goals, that's a, that's a victory, if, if not a moral victory, a real victory to keep them down. First year head coach for the Roadrunners, Frank Wilson. He was at really, LSU. Yeah. Was a great recruiter for Les Miles, running backs coach. He replaced head coach Larry Coker, who'd been here for five seasons, all five seasons of the existence of the football program. And Frank said he, he came here primarily because he saw the opportunity and he shared the vision. You know, this is a great uh, place to, to play Division I football. All the resources that are available and the, and the commitment from the president of the university and from the athletic director. You know, he sat down with Lynn Hickey and President Dr. Romo, and they had to sell him as much as he was selling them. And the, their visions really kind of came together. And that's why Frank was so excited about this opportunity. I mean, you're in the hotbed of high school football. There are over 1,400 high schools in the state of Texas. Last year, there were more kids signed to, to Division I FBS programs from any other state. 372 out of Texas. Florida was second with 364. And then you go down to California at 286. But the numbers are amazing. This is a, a fertile ground to build a program. Yeah, obviously mostly Texans on the roster for UTSA. There's even 16 Texans on the roster for Arizona State. And that's because Coach Graham's a Texan and he knows about it. On first down, Sturm going to the far sideline. A dangerous pass there for Kerry Thomas. Machiola almost had himself an opportunity for an interception. And he jumped a little too soon and he stayed on his feet. And one slide step to the outside, and that's a sit, uh, pick and maybe a pick six. UTSA has not turned the ball over tonight. Arizona State has done so three times. On the delay, Williams, I mean, Latu wraps him up. That's going to lose a yard or so, and it's going to be third and long, third and 11. Turnovers was a, a big thing in terms of when Chip Lindsey came in to take over the offensive coordinator duties during their bowl game last year. And two out of the three games he had coached, they had no turnovers. Tonight, it's caught up with them. And that, that does not make them happy. The, one of the, more, the most proud things they were about is how they're taking care of the football. Tonight, they've dropped two on special teams, those muffs. Takes the handoff to Williams. Now tried to dump off the... Screen pass to him, and that's incomplete. Good defensive play by DJ Calhoun. He just grabbed a hold of the offensive lineman, Gabriel Casillas, and shoved him into the intended receiver. 
kind of grab them all and then figure out who has the ball later. You like to see us break up the play. Well, this has been an issue tonight for Arizona State. And they're going to come after wow. this one, I think. They, they uh, almost got the last one. And take a look who's in the game. This is Tim White making his first appearance. And White uses oh. a stiff arm, gets across midfield. There's a flag coming down at midfield. And I think there, you might get a targeting call here on the block. By Tatelatasi. Yeah, Tatelatasi, uh, he hit it, had one of them peel back blocks, which, uh, you know, if the guy don't see you coming, he's considered defenseless. You're not allowed to hit him up in the neck and head area. You know, or with the crown of your helmet, all the targeting rules that, that apply here. You know, there Tim, is no foul on the play. Now they're going to pick the flag up. As I mentioned, that's the first we've seen of Tim White tonight. He, he's had the right ankle sprain. And they told us before the game, yeah, we're, he's going to sit. He'll be ready for the, the conference opener against Cal next weekend. But I think with what's happened on special teams, the punt return, they felt that they needed. There's the hit, Mark, that, that we, we were discussing about whether or not that would have been a, a targeting, but he got him in the shoulder, not the head area, and so it's a legal play. And upstairs so, agreed, because they can stop it if they want, if they feel it's targeting. Great starting field position, and Richard increases that. He lowers the boom. Mm -hmm. A first down run up to the 35, trying to run over Iguagu. A 13-yard run. I really like Demario Richard. I, I know Kalen Balaj got a lot of media attention and credit, but there's a reason Richard's the starting running back, and you saw it on that last play. we we'll get a couple to the 33. On trail King Williams, the stop for UTSA. A two score game here. Arizona State hands off Richard. Fighting his way to the 30 for three more. Lakel Bass bringing him down. This Roadrunner defense is playing much better than they did last week, in particular at the second level. Ta Effa and Lakia Bass, both of them playing outstanding football in that linebacker position today. ASU tonight just two of eight on third down, a third and five. Hand it on. No, he kept it. And the running quarterback, Manny Wilkins, has the first down all the way up to the UTSA 21. Excellent read by the quarterback, Wilkins. It's a zone read. He's checking the man on the outside. Who's got me? Nobody showed up. I think Eguagu was supposed to be there, but he didn't make it. Keeping again, Wilkins pulled down by De Devron Davis. Gain of four. And Davis got intimately acquainted with Manny Wilkins in the first half and that big hit that got this team excited. And Bass down on the field now. Redshirt Jr. playing a, a heck of a ball game. It's hate to see him down there and he's in obvious pain. Bass had six tackles last week and their loss at Colorado State. UTSA won their opener against Alabama State 26-13 here at the Alamo Dome, but then lost in Fort Collins to Colorado State 23-14 last week. He's going to be at the top of the, the screen, and you watch him, and he kind of goes down on his own. Um, I don't know. It, just like the leg gave out or something. It was kind of bizarre. And then he, then he was able to hop up and get off the field. So that's a... A mystery to me. The ankle, it looked like, just gave away. And second down and six. Upcoming here for the Sun Devils. They're driving at the 17-yard line of the Roadrunners. A little over two minutes to go in this third quarter. Gamage in motion. They hand off a lot straight ahead. Marcus Davenport jumped on him. But this defense from UTSA is way better in dealing with tempo this week. They got caught half a dozen times mumbling and mumbling around at the snap last week. 
This week, not at all. Third and short, third and two. Richard fighting his way and has the first down. A forward progress got him inside the 10. Well, he was pushed back by Marcus Davenport. And C.J. Levine helping on the tackle, but first down. It'll be first and goal from the nine. Nice little drive they're putting together here. Here's the eighth play of the drive. They've all been runs for ASU, and Richard avoids the ankle tackle and makes it up to the five. And I'm starting to see a little bit of fatigue set in on this Roadrunner defense. And that's the uh, obviously the intent when you run tempo. Richard again waits and gets inside the five. And Davenport <laughs> got into it with uh, Stephon McCray at the end of the play. And I can tell you Arizona State isn't happy with the way things are going right now. And there's going to be some manifestations of frustrations. Now third and goal from the four. Wilkins keeping. Brought down in the backfield by Josiah Tawaefa. Tawaefa has quarterback responsibility in this defense. He takes care of the responsibility, but what's more important is he finishes the play by wrapping up hard and finishing the tackle. That's something that he didn't do too well last week, but they are playing so much better. You can see this is an inspired football team. 26 yard attempt. Zane Gonzalez. And we come to the end of the third quarter. Well, Todd Graham and the Sun Devils getting a huge battle back in the home state of Todd Graham. Going to the fourth quarter in San Antonio. It's 28-15. Along with Ray Bentley, I'm Mark Neely. We welcome you to the fourth quarter from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio where UTSA leading Arizona State 28-15. ASU will attempt a field goal. Zane Gonzalez, 26-yarder off the left hash. He's hit from 54 tonight twice from 45 and missed from 53. Kick is away. And good. Got it inside that right upright. Just snuck it in. And it makes it a 28 The 18 game. We're coming up Saturday, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on ABC. It is a huge ACC clash between top 10 teams and their star quarterbacks. Freshman DeAndre Francois leads second ranked Florida State against Lamar Jackson and number 10 Louisville. College football presented by Walmart also streams live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. You know, I said to you during the break, Mark, uh, what a great crowd we have here tonight for the Roadrunners. They are into it. They're excited. They're making noise. And I asked Coach Wilson about the community and how this, this community has accepted the team. He said it's been overwhelming and, and people are loving it. And, you know, San Antonio is the seventh largest market in the United States. And they don't have a, a professional football team here. So there was a void, and that's another reason Frank Wilson came here. He saw the potential right there. In San Antonio, the seventh largest city by population, not including the entire metro area. Gonzalez punches one into the end zone for the touchback. The one thing I told you that I thought was key to this ball game today was explosive plays for the Roadrunners who didn't have hardly any last week. Well, they fake a reverse and they get the quarterback running and so far Dalton Sturm has been outstanding when he's carrying the football. And, you know, you had the little Jarvion Williams move in there and then you're going to get another Sturm run and then finishes it off with the touchdown pass to Shaq Williams. That's a pretty explosive from this offense. Well, the UTSA Roadrunners again, this is just their sixth season of existence. Give Larry Coker credit for starting this thing out and building a foundation. They vastly improved the facilities over the course of the, the short life of this program. 
They're trying to beat a Power 5 team for the first time in their school history. 0-7 against the Power 5. Quarterback draw. Sturm trying to weave his way. Makes it to about the 28 with his forward progress for a gain of three. Tackled by Jamarcus Rhodes. Dalton Sturm continues to impress the former walk-on who initially he worked as a, at a as a waiter at a local eatery here in town to help pay the bills. And, you know, he was paying for his own school up until last May when he finally got his scholarship. A great story. And yeah, what the coaches say about him, Ray, he's not a walk-on anymore, but he still has a walk-on mentality. Right, and that, and that means he's tough, hard-nosed, he's going to work, and he doesn't expect any entitlements. Nowhere to go for Jarvion Williams. They shot small one at DJ Calhoun pushing back. Ten point game. UTSA. As you saw 0 for 7 in their history against Power 5 teams. 0 and 3 against the Pac-12. Their three previous meetings against the Pac-12 team, all against Arizona. They bring a pair of tight ends into the ball game. Put them at the top of your screen here as they go on this third down and 10. Williams motions out of the backfield. And a flag. Nope, actually a timeout called by Arizona State. Yeah, they didn't like the matchup when uh, Williams motioned out to that wide side. All of a sudden, they had two guys covering three, and they quickly pulled the timeout. So the Sun Devils, Todd Graham used their first time out here in the second half with 13.32 to play. Well, before becoming a head coach, Todd Graham, his job was on the defensive side. He was a defensive coordinator for Steve Crackthorpe in Tulsa. Back in 2003 through 2005, was the Pac-12 Coach of the Year a couple of years ago, and still plugged into that side of the football. Yeah, and he's used timeouts prior to third downs uh, multiple times throughout his tenure, and they're 62% on coming up with a stop when he uses that timeout. Here's the blitz, quick throw. McNair stops short of the first down by a couple of yards. He's, what, 63% now? <laughs> and Kareem Orr and Armand Perry stopping McNair well shy of the marker, and... UTSA will punt. And that's Todd Graham's calling card. A, a defensive coach, I asked him where he spends his time. He says, I, I spend a lot of my time on defense with his coordinator, Keith Patterson. He says, I let my guys make the calls, but uh, he spends his time in the offensive meeting rooms as a kind of a defensive consultant. They'll come up with something, and he'll try to poke holes in it. So he's very active on both sides. But Tim. His, I was going to say, his, his strength is defense. Tim White is back to receive the punt. He's calling a fair catch now. Has to come up for it quickly and make the grab at the 32-yard line. So White has come in twice tonight on special teams. That's a 35-yard punt. Our Saturday night football game presented by Wells Fargo at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC is the Pac-12 matchup between USC and 7th-ranked Stanford. And Christian McCaffrey It's our available streaming live on the ESPN app as well as watch ESPN. Christian McCaffrey is a special football player. If you have not had the chance to see him play, uh, do yourself a, a, a favor because that guy is unbelievable in the explosiveness, and he's a threat to go to the house at any given time. Arizona State has now run the ball 13 consecutive plays. This is Balazs. Fights his way for about three, run down by Devron Davis and Michael Iguagu. And several of those plays have been called RPOs, where it's a run-pass option, but because of the alignment and the way these corners are playing for the roadrunners, they turn into runs, and that's the decision Wilkins has been forced to make. Quick pass broken up. Nice diving attempt by Romario Napolis. And that's an outstanding drop by Naples, who he play it's an outside linebacker position it's a hybrid position but he'll also find himself rushing the, the quarterback a lot but that's an outstanding drop understanding where the receiver is and then getting those phalanges out and knocking it away third and eight four of 11 on third down tonight are the Sun Devils 
Wilkins dumps it underneath, and then with the catch and run, Bellage has the first down and more across midfield before he's banged down from behind at the UTSA 45-yard line. Tal Effa came from the backside to bring him down, a 21-yard gain. And another great decision by Manny Wilkins. Everything covered down the field. He knew where his check down was, and he got it to him quick enough to where Balazs could do something after he made the catch. Wilkins has his man open. Gamage gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona State. 45-yard TD. Frederick Gamage. And that deep shot paid off. There was some sort of collision over there that created the separation between Eguagu and the receiver, Gamage. Did he get in? I think he did. It looked yep. to me like uh, he broke the plane before anything touched the ground. Gonzalez for the point after. And Arizona State has made it a three-point game after a four-play drive that goes 68 yards in under a minute and a half. Second time today, Manny Wilkins has been able to connect deep on a home run ball. And Arizona State says, uh, don't go away just yet. Just a three-point game from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, 28-25 UTSA. The touchdown catch for Frederick Gamage, his first of the year for Arizona State. It's interesting what... Uh, Arizona State did they ran the ball 13 consecutive times and then they threw it three times in a row and when you run 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 like that you get defensive backs cheating with their eyes and all of a sudden there's a guy open for a home run after the 13 consecutive runs got the screen pass to go for 21 then an incompletion and then the touchdown pass to Gamage touchback will bring it out to the 25 Brett Winnigan acting like he wanted to bring that one out of the end zone, but probably wise he did not. This UTSA offense needs to get some sort of sustained drive in this situation. Their defense getting worn out a little bit by all those runs and a uh, couple of longer drives by the Sun Devils. The offense needs to bail those guys out, and I don't believe 28 points is going to win this football game. So Mr. Sturm and company, they need to get on the board again if they're really going to pull the shocker here. The last two possessions for UTSA have each been three and outs. Trips at the bottom of the screen, looking in that direction. Pass for McNair, lost the football. Is that live? No, line judge is saying incomplete pass. Incomplete. Armand Perry. And Louis Akaola came there to make the hit. Pretty good one at that. You're going to see McNair get this football and he, then you had do you have possession and do you make a football move and I don't think so it was bang bang you see it in slow motion and you might be able to make a case but it, it's real action that, that thing came out too fast incompletion good call on the field Arvion Williams motions out of the backfield and design run for Dalton Sturm well, he's not shy. Picks up six to the 31. That's Ami Latu with the tackle to gain a six. He's a gutsy player. I mean, and it, it all goes back to that walk-on profile that you think of a kid that uh, nothing is given to him. He's got to work from the bottom on the way up, and that develops some toughness, especially when you start to get a little success, which is what Sturm has had now. The first half, second half numbers. That's what uh, they is to me. It's essential. They convert this. They failed to convert on their last four third down opportunities. Pressured Sturm in big trouble just lofts it out of bounds. But it's going to be another three and out. That's three straight possessions for the UTSA offense. And have been three and outs. Well, let's throw some credit on the Sun Devils too. Uh, their defense has definitely stiffened up. Uh, we're not seeing guys running open down the field. Uh, there's great pursuit to the football. I would say even a sense of desperation from this defense. They know it's on them. They're behind. They got to stop this team, other team from scoring. 
Bring they Tim White out for a third time to receive a punt. Calling for the fair catch. Catches at the 31. I don't think they really want White with that bad right ankle to be returning anything, but they like his sure hands. Right after two muffs, uh, it's time to get someone out there. 39-yard punt with no return. So the ASU offense will come back on the field when we return to the Alamo Dome. This Arizona State offense has picked up the pace here in the last three drives. You see the results, and it's been an outstanding play, really, by Manny Wilkins. He's making plays with his feet. He threw a deep ball here earlier, and then the most recent drive, they, they scored a touchdown on the deep throw from Wilkins. And in their last three drives, field goal, field goal, touchdown for this football team. And they've got it again, down by three in the fourth quarter. Things have been rolling pretty good, and they're wearing this defense out. ASU begins at their own 31-yard line on this drive. Quick strike out to Belaz, who's thrown down at the 29. And it's here, Lasega. The loss of one. Good hustle by this defense. Tua Lasega, a defensive lineman, running to the edge. Even though it was a cutback, he's still hustling after it. And that's the thing I've seen. A huge difference in the effort level from this Roadrunner football team from what I saw on film last week. Balaj stutter steps, turns it upfield to the 35. Gains five, brought down by Marcus Davenport. Davenport did an outstanding job of forcing Balaj back inside to where the help was. And he's a pretty big dude at 6'7", 245. He looked pretty nimble on his feet, old Davenport. Big third down and six for the Sun Devils from their own 35. Let's see if the Roadrunners bring some heat. Oh, yeah. Here comes the blitz for the middle linebacker. And Wilkins with the run. They're going to mark him on the, at the 40, a yard shy of the first down. Decision time for Todd Graham. I, I say you punt this thing away. You're playing good football. There's nine minutes plus, uh, what, six, seven, eight seconds left. Kick it away. And that's what he's going to do. Well, we think he is. He's coming out yeah. with a punt team anyway. And, uh, there's uh, too many men on the field. Now they got off. That was UTSA that had too many men on the field. And yeah, they should have stayed in their defense and played safe. Uh, they got away with one. They had Hawks punt. Taylor has to sprint all the way to the far side of the field and he's going to step out as soon as he caught it right at the 19. That's a 42 yard punt from Mad Hawk with no return. Huge defensive series there for the Roadrunners. They stopped that momentum. Three consecutive scoring drives for Arizona State. And they stuff them on a little three and out and get the ball back to their offense. Now Frank Selfo, the offensive coordinator for UTSA. Yeah, he was a pleasure to talk to. You know, he spent his last three years with the Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, two as a quarterback coach, and most recently as kind of the uh, offensive uh, overseer, you know, just that extra set of eyes. But he wanted to get back into the, the deal where he's making the calls, and that's why he took this job here. Hand off to Jarvion Williams. Minimal gain there. Yeah, Frank Selfo actually was at Arizona back in 2010 and 11, so he's certainly very familiar with Arizona State from that time. He said the Arizona Arizona State rivalry is the heatedest mm -hmm. one he's ever come across, and, and he's been around football coaching for 30 some odd years. So that was a big statement. There's Coach Selfo. The time at Tulane and Louisiana Tech as well. I've never seen him without a smile on his face. That's going to be a fun guy to play for. Star dumps it off. Williams. What a nice tackle in the open field. It really was. Moe Akiola. It's a gain of one. Akiola just stepped up and broke down, shot the shoulder, I and mean, that was a textbook right there. And if I'm the Roadrunners here, I'm going to milk that clock as best as I can, but a conversion would really help that defense and you know they, they have a lead but it's precarious uh, a few more points wouldn't hurt them either but Arizona State's been playing really good defense here in the second half 
UTSA 5 for 14 on third down tonight, but they've missed on their last five third down opportunities. And third and long, third and nine, Sturm. Mm. Dropped by Thomas. There is a flag in the backfield. Not sure if Thomas would have made the first yeah. down anyway, but we'll see what this is about. Answer the face on the offense number 78. The penalties decline, fourth down. That's against Javante Damon, the left tackle. So Arizona State will refuse that penalty, and it's the fourth consecutive three and out now for the UTSA offense. And I give a lot of the credit to Coach Todd Graham's defense. Keith Patterson, the defensive coordinator, inside linebackers coach, has been dialing up some things, and his guys have been playing with a much more uh, sense of desperation in the second half. Tim White back. Fair catch called for. He takes it at the 42. So Arizona State will have very good starting field position after a 38-yard punt. 7.05 to play in this fourth quarter in a three-point game in the Alamo City. Good battle tonight between the Pac-12 and the Conference USA UTSA Roadrunners who lead it by three. And UTSA pick up their first ever win against a Power 5 team, 0-7 all-time. They're 0-3 lifetime against the Pac-12. Again, this is a program that's only been playing football since 2011. They're in their sixth season, and first-year head coach Frank Wilson. It'd be a huge boost to this program, I'll tell you that. This is Richard. Run down from behind by Ben Kane. A gain of just one. Arizona State had to punt on their last possession. Decided to punt on the fourth and one in their own end. But prior to that, their three possessions, they had field goal, field goal, touchdowns. So they've had a lot more success here in this second half offensively. Wilkins taking a shot for Harry. He tries to adjust, leaps for it, incomplete, covered by Tedrick McGee. And it's going to be a quick third and nine. On the successful drives for the UTSA defense, they've stoned Arizona State on first down. That changes everything when you get behind the chains. Now they got an opportunity here with a third and nine, bring heat, play coverage, whatever you want to do. It, it keeps the offense guessing. Manny Wilkins giving some uh, intense hand signals to his receivers out on the bottom of the screen there. Stack two receivers to each side. Third down and nine. Wilkins looking right. Rolling out right. Throws. He's got a man caught. Cameron Smith. First down inside the 25. C.J. Levine finally caught up to him. But a long gainer of 34 yards. First down Sun Devils. And what made that play was Manny Wilkins extending the down by moving outside the pocket. Saw a man drop coverage. Scramble drill. Over their heads. Give it to Richard straight ahead. Inside the 20 to the 18 for five. Stopped by Ronnie Feast. Let's go back to that last play, the long pass. And you see what I mean about Wilkins being able to use his feet to create extra time. And now the coverage gets dropped. The eye discipline was bad. And you get a big play. Richard behind the block of Cody Cole. Up to the 15, he'll be just a couple yards shy of the first down after a three-yard run. Tao Effa with the tackle for UTSA. And this Roadrunner defense has just been on the field too long here in this second half. The offense hasn't helped them out a whole lot. You see if they, they're, they're rolling a bunch of fresh new bodies in. I get four or five new players in now for this third down uh, attempt for Arizona State. They're playing some fresh bodies. Late substitution, Ben Kane comes in, and as a result of that, UTSA calls a timeout. I think that's a good timeout. I mean, they were confused on defense, Mark, with all those substitutions. <laughs> Guys were running around not sure where they were at. So the Roadrunners use their first timeout. And obviously, Critical play, you don't want to have uh, a fire drill going on. UTSA has led throughout much of this game. In fact, the only Arizona State lead is when Zane Gonzalez hit a 54-yard field goal on the first possession of the night. And the Sun Devils led 3-0, but UTSA came right out on their first possession with a 
to Bryce Taylor 10 yard touchdown catch and they've led ever since but obviously here Arizona State well within range of what would be a game tying field goal for Gonzalez but a touchdown would give them their first lead since the first quarter. It'd be interesting to see if they don't make it here and what that fourth down will look like if Todd Graham wants to tie this thing up or go for the kill. Let's we'll see what happens here first. Stack two receivers at the bottom of the screen. The wild they have Bilodge Sparky. in the Sparky package. They go to it for the first time tonight, and it pays off. Bolage has the first down inside the 10. It'll be first and goal at the 8. This was the package they used so successfully last week. Five of the touchdowns from Bellage came in this formation. This is just power football. Great cut initially by Bellage because penetration from the Roadrunner defense almost shut that thing down, but Bellage is too quick. They're going to stay in it here. Wilkins, the quarterback you see, is lined up as a receiver down at the bottom of the, the screen. They don't call it the Wildcat package because obviously Arizona Wildcats, their big rival, they call this the Sparky after the name of the mascot for the Sun Devils. Bellage sidesteps a defender, lowers the head, gets inside the five. Marcos Curry stopped him there. And they got an extra big guy, a big body, number 94, in there at fullback. And that's Christian Hill. He's a defensive end. And I went out and took a look at him in warm-ups. I'm like, that'd be a big fullback at 6'4", 250-plus pounds. Actually, 285 pounds, excuse me. Once again from the Sparky package. Trigger to Bellage. Waits makes his move and then is stopped at about the two or three by a number of blue shirts there for UTSA. Going to be third and goal from the three. And they're going to come out of that package. They're going to put Manny Wilkins back at the QB spot. And look for Wilkins to run the football himself here. Wilkins looking. He may run it. Now he throws incomplete. Had to hurry and a late flag. Cam Smith, the intended receiver. Hendricks was holding him. I think that's going to be the call. Aeneas Hendricks had a, the hold of the jersey on Cam Smith. Pass interference, defense number six. The foul occurred in the end zone. The ball be placed at the two-yard line. First down. Well, the pass interference will set up first and goal. And I, I consider this more really of a hold than a pass interference. He just grabs the back of the... Uh, oh, the yeah. shirt tail there. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. And then actually pulled himself through and almost made a pick. Yeah, he had a chance to pick that ball off as a result, but obviously. Go to the Sparky again. And that's Balaj triggering it on first and goal from the two. And Balaj powers his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona State. Well, after an eight touchdown performance last week for Balaj, he gets his first of the night tonight, and it comes in a huge spot to put the Sun Devils back in front. And that's power football. And that's what you expect from a power five football team. Down in this area of the field, we're going to load up with big people, and we're going to run it right at you. And that's exactly what they did and got into the end zone again. Took their uh, first lead since the initial series of the ball game. And the extra point for Zane Gonzalez. And it's 32-28 Arizona State. Nine play drive. Of those nine plays, seven were runs. And they went to the Sparky package near the end of the drive to get it into the end zone. And Arizona State has taken the lead. 20 unanswered points now here for ASU. And just 3.15 to go here in the fourth. And to me, the, the reason is that their defense has risen up. And, uh, and because of that, it's worn out the Roadrunner defense. Being out there for so many of these drives and your offense is going to go three and out four consecutive times, that, that wears you out. And that, that's a testament to the depth and maybe the lack thereof at this phase in Frank Wilson's football team. Now it's on the offense with this deficit. 3.15 to go. 
They're going to have to get out of, out of neutral here. And it's a UTSA offense that their last four possessions have all been three and outs. Coach Wilson not happy, not sure what he's complaining about out there, but he wasn't very pleased with the officials. Brett Winnigan back to receive this kick from Zane Gonzalez. And Gonzalez, well, <laughs> he almost oh, made the go. mistake of coming out again. Don't let him. He did. He was going to tackle him that time. <laughs> almost started fighting the end zone. Winning it really wanted to bring it out, but. Yeah, you can't let him out. And then that's a great play by don't let the man out. And, and Blake Dean, I'm sure he got yelled at and said, next time, don't let him out. And he didn't. And it almost started fighting. He said, I want to come out. No, you ain't doing it. Great decision there. And sometimes you need your teammates to help you out with that kind of thing. I well, we mentioned the last four offensive possessions for UTSA. All been three and outs. Yeah, and that's uh, those are defensive killers as much as anything. Yeah, you're not scoring points. You're not moving the football. You're losing the field uh, position uh, field position battle. But uh, the ultimate I think damage is you're wearing your defense out. UTSA with only 15 total yards here in the fourth quarter. Arizona State 144 high pass. Over the head of Jabrice Taylor and incomplete. Second down. Actually, there was a little seam there. Had he thrown it down on Taylor, I don't know if he'd have caught it because he was getting lined up for a pretty big shot. I think uh, Dalton might have done him a favor by throwing that out of bounds. But now here they are behind the chain, second and ten. You see total yards. They had 300 through the first three quarters, did the Roadrunners. Scuffling here in the fourth and in trouble. Sturm Houdini. looking to escape, running around again. Uses a stiff arm. Throws. And was that caught by Brady Jones? Yes, at the 34-yard line, a nine-yard pickup. It's going to be third and one. The question is, was Jones, did he tap the toe? Because he got hit and he flew out of bounds, but was the foot down? That's, that's what we got to look at and see here. He threw it into a crowd, didn't he? But oh, found yeah. his target, and that left foot looked like it was down. But and they, they want to take a look yeah. at it upstairs, just to be sure. Okay, while they're looking at this way, you have UTSA with two timeouts. There's 2:49 to left. If they don't convert here on third down, is it time? It, if it's still fourth and one or something along those yeah. lines, I think it has to be considered. <laughs> Especially the way your defense has been worn out and uh, the, the way the, uh, the Arizona State offense has been playing. But Tiger this is going to be a catch. The on the field is confirmed. Play to catch. That left foot was down. And what a play by Dalton Stern to keep and that thing no, alive. He, Three or four times it looked like he was dead to right. Right? He's just amazing in that regard. He's got a knack for he uses the offhand to award people off and then he's so quick and then the, the moves that he makes are uh, really unconventional if you will uh, the, the guys don't anticipate that and they're making sure about the spot and that's that's what they're trying to get straight now it's it's been confirmed as a catch and they need to and I believe they're gonna this is gonna be a first down they're gonna mark him out at the 35. So that's the other part of the equation. So actually After the review, review is going to help out UTSA the here because they adjust the spot. First down. And they're going to make it a first down. Yeah, and that's a good call. And UTSA had failed to convert on their last six third down attempts. And granted, that was just going to be a third one or if it not had been respotted. But that's a big play to get it reviewed and make it a first down. Dalton Sturm, amazing his ability to avoid people back there. He's like the perfect dodging machine. But the clock restarts. TSA has two timeouts and a first down at their own 35. Sturm has to scramble again. Bounces off one tackler. Breaks another, and out of all that, gets a yard up to the 36. But 
How about the play prior to that to get the wow, first down? Watch how Sturm avoids these. I don't know how he gets out of this stuff. It's amazing to me. Uh, you know, he's bouncing between his own guys. Own guys. Somebody's got him in the head. He changes directions, goes the other way. Then he throws the football down the field. He stays alive. This guy's amazing. It's fun to watch. Not, probably not so much fun to tackle. Got to take a deep breath after all that run. It's second down and nine. Sturm. Once again, has to scramble, throws it, and it's picked off. Intercepted by Arizona State. Under through the pass, Jamarcus Rhodes. And the first turnover of the night for UTSA comes in a spot that may be a game killer for them. And I'll tell you what, he had a touchdown if he throws it a little bit further because Marquez McNair had gotten behind Rhodes. And Rhodes is just very fortunate because I, th I think the fatigue was a factor on this throw from Sturm because he got what he wanted. The, the defender had left the coverage. If he just throws this up in the air and down the field and let McNair just run to it, he had himself something. And that's, what I think, what he tried to do, but he just didn't have enough left. So now it's incumbent upon this defense to make a play if they still have any intentions of pulling off the upset. UTSA has two timeouts. A minute 44 left. Can't quite take a knee yet. And the interception for the junior from Orange, Texas, Jamarcus Rhodes for Arizona State is one of the 16 Texans on the roster for Todd Graham. Well, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. And Dalton Sturm was the sword tonight. His ability to keep things alive and run this football team around, but at the end, it caught up to him. The question, you know, they're looking in the booth now. Replay is looking at this to determine if Rhodes had gone out of bounds, because if you go out of bounds, you can't be the first player to touch the ball when you come back in. So hold on a minute. See, he landed in bounds, but the question is, was he out of bounds first? Now, I didn't see an official throw a hat on the field. Watch the feet. Is that right foot out? Is the left foot out? It's very close to the right foot. It's almost hard to tell on this angle, but boy, he's out of bounds. Now, it, it looks like he's out of bounds. Now, it, it, is that right? I, conclusive proof to say he is out? Now, we're this is right view, there. Yeah, yeah that's okay. Out. Now, he's that, out one, of bounds. that one. And he's going to step again in the white. So, the, so this one was going to be turned over. This is an illegal touch. You cannot be the first guy to touch the ball coming back in bounds. Well, and if he never reestablished himself back in the field of play. That right foot, when he jumps up in the air, he's out of bounds. They're going to call this one. Uh, this one's going to be a uh, reverse, I believe, and the roadrunner's going to have the football again. Well, the way it was blown up, it certainly looked like that was enough proof to overturn this call. Indisputably. Here. Indisputable video evidence. He was out of bounds when he jumped up for the football. He, he was established as out of bounds. Now, had he reestablished himself on inbounds, then he's eligible on defense. Offensively, you can't be the first guy. But you have to reestablish yourself inbounds as a defender. They're going to have to uh, look back at the clock and make all those determinations, but this one's going to be overturned. And if so, it would be second down and nine for UTSA at their own 36. You'd have to reset the clock. And the word's out. UTSA out knows they'll get the ball back. It is an incomplete pass. Third down. Please reset the game clock to one. All right, that was a second and nine play, so it'll be actually a third and nine coming up here from the 36. So the call's been overturned, and UTSA still has possession of the football. And Dalton Sturm has been able to get his breath back, so look out. <laughs> 
So the Roadrunners roll the offense back onto the field. And hope is back alive in this house. With the third and nine, they have two timeouts. They put a minute 56 on the clock. Been a fun one here in the Alamo Dome. Great to have you with us, along with Ray Bentley. I'm Mark Neely. First ever meeting between ASU and UTSA has been a fun one. Sturm, quick pass, caught at the 40. McNair, first down. That'll stop the clock. 150 to go to move the chains and then restart. Perez McNair makes a big play there, making the first man miss. And that's what they've got him here for. He came out of Hines Community College, was a Southern Miss uh, recruit, and thought he was going to go there until things changed at the last minute. Sturm, deep strike. Just a little too high for McNair, who leaped for it inside the 30 of ASU. And McNair was going to go to Southern Miss, but then Pete Golding, who had recruited him to go to Southern Miss, got the job here as a defensive coordinator, and he got McNair to flip. It's the incompletion, clock stop, 136 to go, second and 10. UTSA has never beat a Power 5 opponent. They're 0-7. 0-3 against the Pac-12 in their history. Sturm in a crowd. Sack back at the 40. They're going to use one of their timeouts. They're going to let it go. Looks like he ran into his own man, Reed Dara. And I think you have to take a timeout. So they do, and they'll have one left. Here's a sack, and you're going to see he's going to really get run into his own guy as Reed Dara just got knocked right back into him. Uh, Ami Latu used the man he was working on to sack the quarterback. That's pretty good stuff and strength from Latu. Ninth tackle for loss tonight for the ASU defense. And that'll be something that Frank Wilson is definitely trying to turn around along with Frank Selfo. He, he just those are killers. Loss, losses of yardage on plays put you behind the chain, just puts too much pressure on your offense. Now, we are in four down territory here. They've got third and 16, and they're going to have two chances to do something about it. Line to gain is the 44 yard line of Arizona State. Frank Selfo, first season as the offensive coordinator for UTSA. He might want to move the pocket here because they're having trouble matching up inside on Loftus. ASU rushes five. Sturm will be sacked again. This time back at the 26, JoJo Wicker, number one, the first to get to him, and then they just kept pushing him backwards. Yeah, Wicker's the best outside rusher in this Sun Devil, de or Sun Devil defense. But I, I think they should have moved the pocket and given Dalton a chance to get to the edge and use his speed and get away from that pass rush because for the second consecutive week, this offensive line is wilting here in the fourth quarter. And this is a, a, you know, what do you call on a fourth and 24? There's very, you know, the hook and ladder type things. You can throw a Hail Mary. Um, I think you got to go deep into the playbook. And I don't believe you can just sit back there and expect to throw a drop back pass. They've already proven two consecutive sacks. They cannot stop this front four. Get the quarterback on the edge and make him, uh, give him an opportunity to make a play down the field. Converted a fourth down earlier tonight, but that was fourth and about the length of the football. So they need 24 yards for a first down here. They've only accumulated 21 yards of total offense in the fourth quarter. Well, in large part due to all those negative plays. But here they got to move the pocket. Roll him out to the right, see what happens. UTSA needs a first down or Arizona State's going to escape with a win here. Sturm on the run, retreating back to the 15, just lets it go. Is out of bounds anyway and incomplete. And Arizona State will take over on downs with 110 left. 
And Arizona State is going to escape the Alamo Dome with a very hard fought win. And Coach Graham, his big thing is 1 0 this week. Well, it wasn't pretty, but they're 1 0 this week, and they'll continue to roll undefeated into their Pac 12 schedule as they have Cal coming up at home. But you got to give a lot of credit to the UTSA Roadrunners for the way they fought here this after or this evening. Well, Todd Graham has come back to his home state of Texas. And with the victory formation, Arizona State will take a few knees, and this one will be over in the Alamo Dome. Sun Devil schedule coming up, and uh, they're going to be challenged. Cal has Texas tomorrow, so Arizona State, which is going to get home tonight with their charter flight about 3.30 Pacific time back in the Phoenix area. Get a little rest. They'll have a chance to watch Cal play Texas tomorrow. And Arizona State will improve to 3-0. UTSA will drop to 1-2. Well, we saw a good battle tonight, Ray Bentley, and the UTSA Roan Runners certainly showed us something, even though they're going to come out of here with a loss. And they just ran out of gas a little bit at the end, and that, that's something you'll have with a, a new, a young program. Uh, a lot of times depth becomes an issue, and that's what they're working to build. That's what Frank Wilson talked to us about, and they're not quite there yet. So, But give Coach Graham and his Sun Devils a lot of credit for hanging in there and not letting this one get away. So Arizona State improves to 3-0. They come back late and beat UTSA 32-28. I think both teams can come away with this one and feel good about themselves. I know there are no moral victories in football. A loss is a loss, but Frank Wilson's got to be very pleased with the way his football team competed this week and had a chance. And that's what matters. Baseball tonight coming your way next, but here in the Alamo Dome tonight, a big battle, and it's fun to watch Dalton Sturm and the Roadrunners, but they fall short, and Arizona State wins it 32 to 28. For Ray Bentley and our entire crew, I'm Mark Neely. Thanks so much for sharing this one with us. Now let's send you to baseball tonight with Chris Singleton, Alex Cora, and Jim Bowden. So long from San Antonio.